Since all fake. You know that. Every bit of it. I grew up in British Columbia. And I'm sticking with that story, guys. You know, when I make up a fake accent, it's because I'm a creepy guy from Boston acting. Never Jesus. What's wrong with y'all? Big house. The brains are bigger than the doubt. We've been thinking for ourselves. Never let the truth fade away. This is bigger than ourselves. We won't let the world burn. I watched this video earlier about where I'm actually going to watch it. I'll show it to you. It has nothing to do with the show, but it's interesting. You at least learn something, I guess. Galler Nuts, what's up? Been sitting here waiting for you to pop in.
that's it. Ready for the intro, I guess. What's up, Wicked Smart? <laughs> it's all hey, Danny's, it's me, the Linda Binda from TikTok. I wanted to make this video because I wanted to thank you for watching Cold Beer Confessionals with Will Bird. I think that's just incredible. I've watched a few episodes and I'm just like very intrigued. But you know what I'm most intrigued in is... Big Daddy's meat stick. I heard that it's very thick, like a good old German sausage. Um, you know, Linda and her coochie loves that. Oh, <laughs> never mind. Let's not go there. Anyways, um, I hope you have a good show and enjoy it as you can. There's a lot of weird things that go on, especially when it comes from the realm of Linda Bindeland. So um, enjoy the show. Thanks for watching. Peace out. Peace out. Hey, daddies. Hey, daddies. Welcome. Welcome, everybody. I'm Will Bard. This is the Cold Break Professional. That was Linda Benda. Check out Linda Benda and her coverage of Jupiter. Uh, she's out here uh, catching those pedos over on TikTok. Check her out. That was Linda Benda and a cameo somebody sent for me. It's about time to change up the intro, I think. We need a new one. Um, yeah, thank you guys for joining us. I'm Will Bard. This is Cold Break Professional. We started a little bit early. It's still not, still not great. We started a little bit earlier than we have been. Um... End in the week, I guess. Today's Sunday, right? I work every day, so I lose I lose sight of days. Uh, I lose the day all the time. I actually went to, oh, I should have known. I went to Tractor Supply today uh, to get some propane, and I got there at like 640 or something. And I'm like, oh, no worries. Tractor Supply doesn't close to like 8 or 9. And when the guy came out, he I didn't even think about it. He was like, I was just going to close up. I forgot it was Sunday. Uh, but you have that on these big jobs, I guess. What's new? What's new? I proposed a question. I proposed a question on uh, tele or on Twitter just a second ago. I don't know if you get many of you guys have seen it, but how much money do you get to make with Phil, and then and then claim, uh, oh, Phil's bad. I hate Phil, um, and you just get given. Full forgiveness. You know what I'm saying? Like the the conversation was about Phil and the SEC and stuff going on around that. But then they started talking about, uh, or I, I asked, well, what about Andy? Because they named the person who posted it. It was Shaq, by the way. I love Shaq. If she doesn't get involved, or they, he, him, I don't know, doesn't get involved in the drama, just want to expose Phil. I love their post. But anyways, we were talking about Andy. I guess the question for me is, she still benefits right now from Phil, right? Phil basically built her downline. She's still a member of 7K. She took most of her downline with her, and now she's like, oh, Phil's bad. But how much did she benefit while Phil was, while Phil was doing his thing, right? While Phil was, was telling people to invest, and he w she was on videos with him. Remember the, the famous Phil's going to get uh, billboards or whatever? I don't know. I just, I, I'm not saying that she should. I'm, I'm asking the question, like, <laughs> do we let just people make millions of dollars with Phil, then say feel bad once they've got their own, you know, downline and can leave or whatever? Thousands of dollars, millions of dollars. How, what's the limit? Because a lot of a lot of groups have completely forgiven her and just you, nobody can say anything to her. Nobody can question her. Nobody can say anything about it. Um, She's good now because she says feel bad. Uh, I even know that she was part of, well, I've been told that she was part of Nick's uh, research team for his his movie on Phil, which is great, but are we just giving her a pass? I mean, she's still doing 7K. Nick said anybody that sells gold or silver, anybody selling gold or silver is a grifter. I don't know. Anyways, I'm asking you guys. Uh, I might start a series on the people surrounding Phil. <laughs> Who's with Phil? The good, the bad, the ugly. I just think it's uh, I just think it's interesting, but anyways, I put that on Twitter. The other video I was talking about, I was going to show you. Let me see where do I want to do it at. Let's do this. Um, Joe Rogan, I would love to have one of these. Joe Rogan uh, got a new racing sim from uh, from. Did we already go over this Podium One Racing? Uh, did I already show you this? 
I remember watching it, but I don't know if I showed it. He got a new racing sim, and this thing is insane. You can go from racing to, like, uh, helicopter controls to, like, uh, airplane controls to, like, whatever. It's, it's, in, it's insane. So, basically, the story behind this is, we'll just skip to this video and look at it. The story behind this is that, um, damn it, what's the guy's name that's on with Burt Crusher? Um, they have the podcast, uh, Tom, uh, Tom Segura. Tom Segura saw a video of one of these simulators, and he ordered one. And then he showed he showed Joe Rogan, like, hey, I ordered one of these. Look how cool it's going to be when I get it. And then Joe Rogan ordered one from his studio. But check this thing out. It's These are insane. They're, they're stupid expensive. Like, if I ever get rich, I'll probably buy one. Um, like you can get, you can build on yourself for much cheaper. You don't need the, you know, the special racing seat and the special controls and, and four giant monitors, but these are cool. Like if you had the money to just deck it out, they're pretty neat. Check it out. This is from a company called Podium One Racing, uh, and they build these simulators in-house. They come out, set it up if you want them to, but they've even got their own custom like monitor mounts to where everything lines up perfectly and can barely see the bezels and shit. Just check it out. It's got a real Recaro racing seat in it. And the music sounds. Honestly. get to the where they're putting it together five percent done and we're going to be putting the finishing touches on to deliver it to his studio in they've actually built this company is so specialized in it they've built their own custom pieces to like stick in there because you couldn't buy it off the shelf now you can just like i could just use my computer and buy like the steering wheel and gear shifter and pedals or whatever and just sit here but if you're going to go all out, you might as well go all out. These things are insane. Austin, Texas. Obviously, as you can see, it's not fully done, but let's get started on the assembly and show you guys step by step in the process of how to get it to the final product. You by the way, if you want to help me buy a, a Podium One racing simulator, please consider going to coldbeer.fun, support the show, uh, make a contribution. You can use any of the links on the left, buy me a coffee where you can send a text based message, join our Patreon for extra content. Gun and Bomber is just the old donation link. You can type out whatever you want there. I'll read it. Uh, and then download clip if you want to record an audio or video. If you do not want anything to pop up on the screen, you use this bottom button. I'll know you donated. You'll know you're donated. I'll thank you probably by first name. Uh, but this button makes nothing pop up on the screen, the very bottom button. You can also find my social media links, Twitch, Kick, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, Telegram, Facebook, TikTok, Rumble, Discord, and Bovada. Bovada is an affiliate link, but the rest of them are just, uh, you know, my social media links. Check them out, uh, especially if you're not following me somewhere. Who knows when I'll get banned again? You guys are new here. We are Podium One Racing, and we are the world's best turnkey sim builders. And this is just another one in the process. Now, you guys haven't seen some of the sims we built, but this one specifically has a few custom options that we want to go into unique to a few different. I know I've got it. Joe was we've got it sped up. Porsche chalk gray. He didn't specifically want any particular custom color, but here we like. I know I've got it sped up, but I'm just skipping around. That's his. That's his uh, Porsche. We want to make it unique. He has a Porsche chalk gray. With the rig, is that Joe has no idea that this is going on at the sim. He Recaro on that seat. Before we go, so that's an actual Recaro racing seat. The aspects of this rig is going to be the seat. Now, this is it's all carbon fiber. I think this is the Recaro podium seat right here. As you can tell, it's a full carbon fiber seat. Now, an interesting aspect of this with the rig is that Joe has no idea that this is going on at the sim. He thinks he's getting a standard seat, whatever comes with the P1 Ultimate, and now he's getting a super unique seat along with. I'll show you how expensive these things are in a minute. He has a bunch of podcasts and stuff. He's also into cars and racing and things of that nature. So Joe Rogan has a bunch of cool stuff at his studio. Like he has like a infrared sauna. He has that uh, tank where you go in there and like float in salt water and all the lights are out and there's no sound. What's it called? Um, submersion. No, what's it called? Where like you can't hear anything, see anything. I, I forget. Anyways, he's got one of those. He's got a bunch of stuff that people on his podcast uh, come and try out. And he saw one of our reels on Instagram that went viral. He reached out to us and we were working with him to build him a custom sim. If you guys might have saw on one of Tom's podcasts, he actually talked about this and getting this new sim. Sensory yeah, deprivation. You Thank you. We're very opposite what? from each other. A PC system? Count. <laughs> they even put like rumble in the seat and shit. Like to where you can feel like different things that happen in the game. What? You oh, for what fuck's sake. Another know. Oculus thing? No, uh, no. What? What? A seat? It's the oh, most. No. One of the. Yeah, but it's that. It even moves some. It's that one even moves some, it looks you, like. Is she excited for you? Oh, no. God. I don't know if they all do that. That one kind of tilts and moves a little bit. Uh, um, any type of car, any type of track, then go to helicopter and they give you all the. Oh, and then, the and then go into. Yes. Then go to planes and even jets. We took that clip, cut it up, put it on our Instagram, made a reel of it, and Joe saw that and sent us a DM. It's kind of funny the DM he sent us. Joe sent us a message and said, I effing 
need this in my life. Ha 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 ha. So we are getting in contact with him, get in contact with James. Just saw the video Segura put up. Okay. This sim set up from us. And again, we're going to do a little add-ons here and there, but while we're selling. So basically because it's Joe Rogan, they give him a bunch of free shit too. Well, I built a setup for $2,000 at home and you can do it. Again, I encourage you guys. There are people on TikTok that that's all they do. They go live and they pretend like they're driving a tractor and trailer. It's kind of weird because they make money through donations while pretending to drive a tractor and trailer. And there's actually other people out there really driving a tractor and trailer getting paid. It's just a weird dynamic, I guess. Yeah, but when you see the context picture, uh, let's give ahead. Of building a hole of the monitor so I can increase this or this to adjust the level. So they got no, custom mounts to, to fix so everything again, perfect. Here, obviously on this side, same thing. This is going to slide in with the other monitor on so we can get everything perfectly centered, perfectly lined the software side getting even an nvidia 4090 we'll go into this pc specs but even a 4090 struggles to recognize and power three giant 4k monitors the weight of these things is leaning forward well take, take my uh trusty number four allen key here and i'm gonna start to kick the bottom of this monitor out so these things line up now right now we've got the screen protectors on but without them these bezels actually lock into each other so you can see that this is slightly higher so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna lower it or raise this one make sure the level and we'll get these things perfectly crisp now one of the biggest things is a lot of times the bezels right, oh, well, lock the bezel into each other market. so for us if you get these things perfectly level perfectly adjusted and locked in they just completely disappear all right so they make a they make a kit for like some monitors. Like if you're running multiple monitors, especially like on a simulator or something like that, and you don't want to see the bezel, like the outside of the monitor, like the black part, they make this little thing that like slips on both ends of the bezel. And when you slide it down on there, it's almost like uh, it's almost like a magnifying glass, but it like reflects refra refracts the light to where you just see more of the edge and it makes the bezel completely disappear. Here is the PC, big boy. What do we got here? So essentially what we do for our PCs is max them out to the full capability that we can within reason. Of course, we could get 120 gigs of RAM, but the reality is, is it's not gonna be used, right? We want to have 20, 30% headroom in every PC, both from a processing standpoint, from a graphics standpoint, so that we can run the highest frame rates possible. So with triple Samsung Arc with NVIDIA, the most that we can power is 120 hertz, and that's an NVIDIA block. You can't go above 120 hertz for triple 4K. That being said, we need to be north of 120 frames, at least 120 frames, and we make sure that we, again, have the right processing, right graphic power. Just by doing this, look how crazy wide that angle is. We're gonna be able to give you guys a better representation. Once That's we get insane, all, the all those monitors. Well, first, let's just Anyways, this is going to Joe Rogan's studio. So we're be just pushing, we're get fired There's the, the subwoofer and the speakers and stuff mounted on the back. As we come around the back, we got the so it's got a subwoofer tied into it so you can hear it. I'm sure, I'm sure it's pretty realistic. And here for the subwoofer, as well as we have the PC that's about to get fired up for the first time. Wire management's done, everything like that. So I cannot wait to see this thing ready to go. But we got everything pretty much ready to go here and slide into. And then the seat just kind of slides in there. That way it's adjustable. You can move it, you take it out of the way. Plus, they have like this quick connect on all their controls. So let's say you don't want to drive a Formula One car. Let's say you want to fly a helicopter. You like slide those controls off, slide the other controls on, uh, and use the levers to lock them down. You're good to go. Or if you want to fly a jet or whatever. So I think they even ship it to them with like four different steering wheels. So that's on wheels. Now we're going to get everything plugged in and ready to go for the very first. We're, we're ready for it. There's a, wasn't there a thing that NASCAR was doing? with like bringing simulator racers. They had like the I racing series. And if you win that, you get to go to like an actual NASCAR race or some shit. 15 to 20 more drive. additional work to make this thing perfect. It is a hundred percent complete and ready to go to Joe. So now we're going to go ahead and show you guys everything about it, fire it up and show you guys that's actually using the rig and see how it's working. Now, there's a lot of unique features about this rig that only Joe Rogan is going to have. And it's some technology you guys are going to see coming in the future. This is the first rig ever. Now, let's first go ahead and talk about, we've talked about a little bit already. The monitors, you can see the massive 55 Jesus Samsung Christ. 4K curve monitors looking absolutely stunning. We got a light setup. One of the things we come around here, you can see the uh, Philips Hue on top there that are obviously a nice little as we come around the back, we've already talked about it. Paint match for this part as well. We have these speakers all hooked up. There's five points of sound around the entire rig. We have the subwoofer back here. All the wiring is tucked and ready to go. As well as we have the PC, obviously. It's That's insane, dude. Here. Steering wheel holders. But what makes it cool is we'll go around to the other side. All four wheels that we have are not just powered here. They're also synced with software. So you can... So the steering wheel holders are powered and synced to where the screens, the buttons, the lights, and everything still work. To where when you go to select your steering wheel, it's all lit up. You can see everything on it. Run everything about the wheels as they're powered here. You can add YouTube videos on them. You can add different parts of the screen on there. Anything you want can be run. It's not just powered, which has never been done before. And this just looks absolutely stunning because we're sending Joe with four different types of wheels, which we showed you guys. And so now what we need to do is we need to run some eye racing. We're going to grab one of these wheels and get it going and show you guys some actual footage of the rig running because I know you guys all want to see that. So I'm going to grab this off here. There we go. As you can see, I'm going to take Mario Andretti's real axle coming up. No, I didn't. Back I will look it up in a it's second. As as this. Go ahead. We have a quick so now we're I know this has nothing to do with my normal show, but it's interesting. Because this takes a lot of man hours of figuring a lot of things out, and that's something that most people won't see. I'm going to go in here and go into iRacing. Now, iRacing takes a little bit to learn, obviously, its own software. We're going to go ahead and do an AI race. I'm going to pick a car. I love driving Porsches, so I'm just going to do Porsche quote home track. But is that this is one of the most realistic feeling into feel the car when it's sliding out you can feel different things are understeering those are the the points and the advantages of having rigs like this because that's actual learning because in real life you'll feel the car understeering or feeling the weight transfer which is like 
really feel well, like it. Something that's really cool is you can see the color of the wheels. Obviously, this wheel is absolutely that's insane. That's insane, dude. Lap, I would lap, love to have one of these. The track on here. But what's also really cool is once we get into the race, all of the wheels that are connected over here, all of the same features that are happening on here happen on those as well. They're not even being played. So you'll see the shift lights, everything changed. That wheel down there is showing RPMs in here. It's crazy. We're going to talk a little bit more about everything going on. Obviously, we have the wind feature that is not just fan, it's variable speeds as well as directional. So depending on if you're you know, turning left, turning right, you can feel the wind from different directions. They have a wind feature. So they have a fan that blows on you in different directions. <laughs> they have a fan that blows on you in different directions so you know which direction you're going. As well as this That's wheel, insane, dude. It's a newton meters of force, which is enough to break your finger. And uh, we're not going to have it turned up all the way to that. We have it to a reasonable setting right now so you can get that realistic wheel has up to 27 newton meters of force which is enough to break your finger and uh, we're gonna have it turn up all the way to that we have it to a reasonable so the wheel has resistance motors built into it so you can feel like understeer oversteer the car pushing back if you got a flat right whatever now, you can get that realistic feel but i just can't wait to get out here try this out especially with this wheel absolutely insane and uh get racing yeah the the fucking seat and everything's moving like crazy look at it that's insane Get on the brakes. Jesus Christ. Yeah, I think it was NASCAR did something with like the iRacing series where like if you were like champion of the iRacing series or whatever, you got to come out and drive a real car because simulators are getting so, so advanced that they're, they're the same. Otos controls, which stands for. I think he's gonna throttle and stick. Now there's a love. He's gonna fly a helicopter, I believe. Of upgrades for her. Um, you'll know 44, R22, R66, MD500, any of the bells. Which Windows flight simulator is incredibly accurate. Basically, you can fly any type of aircraft you want into any airport in the world you want. Uh, they use satellite data and and video and shit to set up every airport in the world. Uh, EC130, etc. So I just wanted to. Get what happens when you wreck? You have to call an ambulance. It throws you on the floor. You actually get the injuries from the wreck. Get out of the way because I know a lot of the, uh, the nerds will be in the comments. But we're in Pond's device. And, uh, getting our chopper here. I'm gonna get this steering wheel out of the way. You can see how easy it is. Quick release. No, I'm just kidding. No, I've got nothing in the way of uh, what I'm. I'm sure at. it just rumbles a little bit. Slowly and safely lift off here. I'm in Toronto. It's a fun place. He's to got fly. collective pitch and everything. It's just like flying a helicopter in Toronto. The flight, in my opinion, is that I can feel the rotor right now. I don't know if you can see, but I put like a water bottle here. Maybe we'll do that a little test later. But the water, you can actually see the vibrations. I can feel that in my butt right now. Um, and so it makes me feel really connected to what's going on. So when I rotate, this whole thing is gonna start to shift. And it's just super immersive. You can see the sunset here. The best thing about Microsoft is the graphics. It's got satellite of the entire world, so I can quite literally and virtually hit any airport in the whole world for the most part. I would say 90% of them. There's a lot of graphics mods we can do. So, for instance, Toronto behind me, and I'll, I'll loop around here. That kid that won iRacing got a ride, and he won last week in a real car. See, I thought they were doing something like that. I couldn't remember. Because I remember there was like a bunch of, um, there's a bunch of hop around this kid that came from the iRacing series. Uh, and it was supposed to be like a big deal. That's cool. It looks like Toronto, but I can actually upload a uh, photorealistic version of Toronto. So buildings look perfect in 4K. You see all the lights and the trains and whatever it is in the city. Right now, it looks cool from afar. You get up close to see because the satellite data, some of the buildings look almost looks like uh, we're flying an I Am Legend or something like the city's been overrun. But that, again, that's just because it's all satellite data. Pretty infinitely programmable and upgradable, uh, both software and, and hardware wise. Quick little tour of the city. I'm going to bring it back down for a landing. Let's see what I can do. Right now, I've got uh, data streaming on. So as I fly, it's actually going to be updating the world. It's going to be uh, updating the graphics. We can bring this in. I'm coming in a little hot. 120. We're gonna pull our nose up, power down. We're gonna flare, and now we're bleeding speed. We'll be able to bring this thing in for a nice soft landing. That's insane, dude. Uh, That'd be so much fun, right? 500 systems dropping, meaning the collective cyclic anti-torque pedals are literally one to one replica. Am I the only weirdo that, that thinks this would be fun? If an arcade was set up like this, I would spend uh, tons and of and money doing it. Ejecto Cito, cuz that's right. I'm learning how airplanes and helicopters work, and then. You can fly Blackhawks, Apaches, like you can fly all kinds of you can create your own dash like army shit, military shit, on there with like civilian shit. Which is really cool. Colorways here, LMP any of your rigs, we'll some of them all pretty much they're pretty intense, right? Typically, that's pretty crazy. These two wheels, as you guys saw, we got carried away with the powered wheel holders that we built for Joe and wanted to be able to. This is this is supposedly like um like the company, like the best company. Uh, the top of the line, the top whatever. I mean, Tom Segura and Joe Rogan are ordering from them. I'm sure there's not a better company. Uh, give them more options because all the people that are going to be in the studio, since the Sims going in the studio, whether it's an Elon Musk or a crazy conspiracist on, on aliens, whatever it is, some guys might be into drifting, some might be into formulas, some might be into sports cars, or even playing farming simulator. And now we've got four options for anyone to be able to drive whatever they want to. Imagine, ready to be imagine buying this whole thing and then just driving a tractor around on farm simulator.
Locked up and sent to Joe's studio in Time to Harvest, boys. At the studio, but we're hoping they'll talk about it potentially in the future and some of his podcasts. Also, Tom Segura is going to be delivered here in a few weeks as well. And so maybe they'll get some races together. But this is the final form of Joe. They had a video of Cat Williams at Joe Rogan's studio driving this thing. I were able to show you guys the entire build process. We're excited and ready for Joe to get on there and have some fun. And you never know who's going to be on this sim. This sim could house Elon Musk, could house any of his guests. Could be fun. And maybe we'll convince them to buy some sims as well. So if you guys enjoyed this build series, let us know. We will be doing another one with Tom Segura. We have a ton of content with Tom Segura. We'll be delivering his. We'll be filming the whole process and doing some content. Tom Segura. So Joe Rogan said they couldn't film in the studio. They, he just wanted to buy. He didn't want to make a deal out of it. Um, but Tom Segura, I guess, signed some type of deal. His is probably cheaper because they're filming all the setup, the studio, everything. With him. So look out for that. We'll catch you guys in the next video. So if we go and look these things up, Podium One Racing, let's see, uh, let's go to Turnkey um, Racing Sim Builds. So the P3 Sim Rig Turnkey is $13,000. P2 is sixteen. dollars The Turnkey Ascari Formula is eighteen. dollars The P1 is $35,000. The P1 Racing Sim Rig officially licensed Porsche uh, peripherals is 45000 The P1 Ultimate Obsessed Garage Turnkey is $57,000. These people just, these people just have money that it doesn't, it, it doesn't even register. Like we're not on the same level. Who could imagine spending $60,000 on a video game, but Joe Rogan won't even notice it missing. You know what I mean? Like that's insane. Uh, it's a track racer TR120 sim rig chassis with DD mount, Carl Pro sim star racing seat, Aztec uh, Invicta 27 Newton meter wheel base. So that's the uh, that's the what the wheels snap onto. They give you like the force and the back force. Um, G3 formula wheel, um, PSI Max 32D style wheel, ultimate two pedal throttle and clutch. Sim Cube Active Pedal for Brake, BDH H1 H Pattern Shifter, uh, an E-Brake, triple 55-inch Samsung Arc Monitors, Gaming PC with RTX 40 Series, VR Ready. So some people do the Sims in VR. Rather than having the three big monitors, they might have one monitor to set everything up, and they'll put on a VR headset. That way, when you turn your head, it doesn't matter how many, mon how many monitors you have. Logitech 5.1 Z906 Sound System. Corsair wireless gaming headset, headset hook. Thank God they included that for $50,000. Wireless keyboard, mouse, PC self shelf kit, surge protectors, D-Box 42050i, 4.4 motion with required mounting bracket. I don't even know what that is. 4.4 motion. Is that something to do with like the seat or something? Haptic system, 4 motion. Okay, so that's what moves the, the chair base around. With the crowd mounting brackets, wind a simulation kit, full cable management and additional accessories. And that's not even counting the 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 PC on here is probably like five grand or more. Custom built liquid cool PC with 13 gen Intel i9 RTX 4090 graphics card, 64 gigs of RAM, two terabyte NVMe hard drive, programmable LED lighting, software loaded and pre-configured, peripherals are updated, configured and buttons mapped iRacing ACC AMS2 installed as default. All settings configured and tested. Additional software can be installed if requested. With Flight add-on, Microsoft Flight uh, Simulator is installed and configured. DCS can be installed as well if desired. Damn. Sixty thousand dollars. $60,000. DCS is the digital combat simulator. System comes built, software loaded, pre-configured, and tested by our team. Chassis and monitor stand are separate from each other for ease of placement. Monitors are not installed on the stand as they need to be protected within the boxes. Ships in a 60 by 60 by 60 wooden crate. Truck will have lift gate and pallet jack to roll. You probably need a forklift at your place. Flight controls can easily be added to the rig. So this doesn't even count like... The the control to fly a plane. This is just for cars. So it's probably another $5,000 to get all this stuff to fly a plane. Due to recent shortage of 4090 cards, AMD Radeon cards of equivalent capabilities may be used. That's impossible. There's not an AMD, AMD Radeon card that keeps up with the 4090 right now. Um, they're still behind. I hope. 
AMD. I like AMD CPUs. I hope their GPUs um, get a little get a little better for sure. So that is the that's the basic base, but obviously they add on all that shit to put the other monitors and shit on. That's the thing that snaps the uh, steering wheel in, so you can like feel in the steering wheel. You know how you're driving your car, you can feel bumps. You can feel like the steering wheel pushing back if you're going around a curve too fast. Understeer. That's what that does when you snap the steering wheels on. Different style steering wheels. All the pedals. Jesus Christ. The brake is an active brake because you can set you can set pressure on the brake. What it feels like. Does it push back? Does it does it bump? Does it is it smooth? How much does it take to lock the brakes? You can set all of that up. So basically every car will have a different brake profile. And if you want to be super realistic, you would change your brake profile for whatever car you're driving. That way, if you ever get in the actual car, it's, it's the same. Dr. J's gaming setup, Buzz 2. She told me it wasn't like a chair. It was more like a saddle. I don't, I don't know what that meant. Maybe she plays a lot of Western games. Maybe she plays a lot of, a lot of like Red Dead Redemption or something. I don't know. Five triple arc monitors. Jesus. They're 55, five, or I'm sorry, three 55 inch monitors. That's insane, dude. Triple screen stand. That's, that's where all the screens go. D Box 425i. It says, worthy of the D Box name. They're packed with the latest innovations in haptic technology to provide you. So you remember the old like PlayStation controller? It would like rumble in your hand. Well, for a long time, games have been mapping like what the actual rumble should feel like. Uh, what the uh, what the system should feel. Should it feel like you lunge forward or lunge back because you're accelerating and lunge forward because you hit the brakes? Well, games have that mapped into them now. And if you have the ability of something to um, to emulate that, it'll it'll move you around while you're sitting in the chair. Increased hardware customability, customiz customizability, all new infrastructure, uh, fitting the G5 haptic system on a simulator is easier than you ever think. It's compact design, which gives so basically it's just these four, I don't know, cylinder hydraulic cylinders, I guess. Are they hydraulic? I don't know. It might be air, and it and you put those on the corners, and that's what moves you around. Uh, more than motion. Jesus. Surround sound. I bet you this surround sound system is probably more expensive than most of us want to buy. A stream deck to launch the application. I've got two stream decks here. They're not too bad. Gaming headset and hook. Amazing. PC tray. Digital uh, Dual surge protectors and cable management. Custom liveries. Uh, have a favorite car, favorite team. Uh, we'll des we design custom... For the Recaro Pro Sim Star Chair, we will work with you to find the right design, get it printed, and wrap the chair before it ships. So you can put custom designs on the chair, I guess. All right, somebody said that there's a video of... Hold on. Marco Andretti loses rear end of truck. Let's see. Somebody say we should watch this. I don't watch a whole lot of racing. I think it's fun, though. A simulator's fucking fun. The 11 of Corey Heim coming out in 19. Caution is out. Oh, my God. <laughs> I would say the rear end come out. A really bad wreck. That is unbelievable. Through the boom operator zooming into it. Kind of limping down the front stretch with a lot of smoke. Remember, Serious issue. Does it hold a puke bucket? I hope not. Wow. The fuel window is right around 22 laps. I mean, you're so, going to be a peak under. Do they have a, they have a replay of it or something? Come on. The fuel window because. I Jesus Christ. <laughs> and that's going to take a while. Too bad it's not front wheel drive. Up and get it back. That's why I brought up the fuel window because I know we're safe. His truck races of seven. has got that record right there. Right. That away. boom camera is right on top of it. Look at it. We're going to have to have another record to get that rear end housing. This was Marco's first truck race of seven scheduled. It's all. All right, here we go. There it is. Jesus. <laughs> Wait, back that up. How'd it come out of there? Rolling right in front of him. To the frame, or gone. Wow. 
You see brake duck hoses flapping. That's what happens when they when they plow and salt the roads and and you keep driving in it, right? It's, been, it's probably that truck was probably up north. Somebody bought it up north and never never washed the undercarriage very well. Caution is out for the sixth time. Shock. You see a shock flipping around the silver thing on the far side. There's a shot from afar. Oh, oh my God. Wow. There it goes. <laughs> Popped right out. All he saw was pavement. Yeah. He went straight oh, up. It's probably a New Jersey truck. Nothing good comes from New Jersey. Tell him about it, legend. Two, but Sir, you can't park the there. See the shocks flipping around. Brake duck hoses flipping around. <laughs> Everything comes loose. That'd be a cool, that that'd be a cool souvenir to have. Load that up on the trailer. Wow. Bruce Cook is crew Look how right. sticky the tires are. They're picking up grass. Uh, the compound they use for race tires, once you heat them up, they get so sticky. Like, lay your hand on them, they're sticky. When the, I used to think when they talked about tires being sticky, it was like a like on a molecular level, like you couldn't, but literally sticky. Right now, just must be beside himself. He's been in this sport a long time. I wonder if he's ever seen that. So Corey Himes has got to be shaking his head as well. He was just coming out of turn number 20, about to take Jesus. the white flag when this happened. Yeah, that's the, oh. red, center, the red thing with that black gear. Pretty good. Obviously, it's coming loose from the drive shaft. There's a shock over on the right side, the silver and gold. We know what a shock is, bro. Chill out. That guy's described the shock four times. We get it. We get it. Um, let me see. This is a shorter clip. I wonder if they have any zoomed in or anything. Right there. Yeah, there's Zillich right behind Ben Rhodes. <laughs> oh. Oh. Just rolling away. Oh, wow. That's, that's, that's the Marco rear, Andretti. That's the rear end housing of that truck. I've never seen that before. What a shot that was. Meanwhile, the 11 of Corey Heim coming out in 19. Pit crews are out. pretty amazing. Uh, I don't know, though. I have it running in a few seconds. A, a, a real Limping down the front stretch with a lot. Of man, there's so many. Uh, the jack man is usually the first guy across the wall. Like when you come in for a pit stop, the guy with the jack jumps on the wall first because he's got to get over there and get set up so the tires can come off. There's been so many jack guys get ran over by their drivers. A serious issue. Which is Remember insane. Said, wow. The fuel window is right around 22 That's laps. pretty hardcore. I mean, you're so, getting a peek underneath the hood. Here's his, uh, you guys want to hear what he said about it? Here you go. Uh, Why Watson Crunch Rush.com here with Marco Andretti. Uh, peculiar, peculiar, but bad end to your day. Uh, can you tell us how what you felt before the the failure in, in the rear housing? Just big vibrations. Um, through the you think? Throttle, acceleration, brake. Just huge vibrations. Rear limb is vibrating, right guys. Here. Um, I would say. Some people love huge vibrations. I'm done with these character builders. I think my character's built at this point, and uh, we're ready for a straightforward weekend because. I haven't been able to fight yet this season, and it's getting a little frustrating. Yeah, it's, just, um, it's unfortunate. Have you ever, like, seen that happen to anybody in your life? I've never just... seen that happen. I'm happy it didn't happen. Like, at, at speed speed, that would have been pretty bad. All right, well, tough 10. Uh... Definitely could be from New Jersey. My Jeep only has 50K, uh, 25K, not in New Jersey, and some non-road miles, and it's rusted to shit from the salt. Yeah. It's uh, it's bad. It's bad living in a northern state. Uh, good luck I mean, it's bad one. down here. They use that liquid salt brine, um, and they use road salt too. But down here, we just don't have a, a huge window of it. You get time that you can go and and wash it off. You you know you have it once, and you go wash it off, and you might not see it for uh, you know a month. Uh, salt on the road again. Marco. This is Harrison Burton, driver of the number twenty one. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. Also. I don't Harrison Burton, driver the number twenty one. I bet you he's got a fake accent, doesn't he? Doesn't he? Calling me out on my fake accent. Um, here you go. Here's my fake accent uh remark. You ready for it? I haven't even watched that one yet. I don't even know what that one is. Here you go. Well, new to the Wicked Red Pill podcast. This is the show where we get a little bit silly. We talk a lot of shit. But unlike some other freaking truthers out there that have fake accents and shit like, like that, when we do it here, <laughs> it's a lot of people all. It's in a character. That's why old school Bobby is here. I ain't out here trying to play up my southern accent like some fat, bald, calm, fat veteran. Feel, feel. Hey, feel. You should have paid me feel. You know, we don't do that freaking shit over here. We just talk like we talk. We do what we do. We have a wicked good time. But 
What? While he's literally, while he's literally doing a fake accent and a character. <laughs> One thing we do on Friday nights, we're bringing back an old tradition, guys. That uh, has been out of place. I think you're jealous. Glitch in the Matrix when Glitch moved over there, and uh, but it had started here on the Wicked Red Pill podcast. On all right, let's see what this other one was. I don't even know what this one is. Um, you know, it's just, it's the year of exposure. Dr. Z's been talking about this a lot. I talk about it a lot, too. We're very similar people. We hang out a lot. We're on the same time. Same sign, all that shit. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, fuck, I lost my... It is you, you fucking retard. I, I don't know how he plays a character and then talks about himself. And Dr. Z and I hang out a lot. He's my best friend. My trainer thought that. Oh, yeah, everybody's going to expose themselves for who they are this year. Good. Somebody said, speaking of blown out rear ends. <laughs> that was pretty good. That was pretty good. I'll give you one of these. There you go. <laughs> They're hilarious. This is as funny as it gets. He had to make a character to be funny, and it's still kind of, eh. Bad. Everybody's going to get pants this year. And as Dr. Z's sister, the salt maven over at Salt of the Earth, like to say, make sure you're wearing clean underwear, kids, huh? Because you're getting pants, too. Everybody's getting pants. Most of us have on clean underwear. But there's a lot of shit stained underwear mm. out there, too. And uh, we're starting to see him with old Phil Faggins and his little lover boy there, Shield Turd, who pretends to be against them but is actually for him. We got another oh, message yeah. today from the exposed Phil Godlewski. Pretending. Channel. Did you know that Katie, who runs the, the Phil, exposed Phil Godlewski channel, was talking shit about Nick? Yeah, we freaking knew that. She's been paid by Phil Doe the whole time. Even those of us who are new to the Phil Doe exposure over the last few months figured that. I don't know that she's been... I don't know that she's been paid. It does seem like she reached out to Phil to accomplish some things, which we called a long time ago. We may have even called it before it actually happened, uh, but it does seem like she reached out to Phil um, because she felt like she needed help with some people online, something like Shit that. Out right away. He's got this whole network of paid fucking shills of paid people that are pretending to be against Scott Rogers does have better, better characters. Like, they didn't even know that. They didn't even know that until they're updated. They're like, oh, yeah, we knew that. We even knew, and we knew that. No, someone told you. The Phil Doe exposure over the last few months figured that shit out right away. He's got this whole network of paid fucking shills of paid people that are pretending to be against him. Maybe this hairdresser case out in California is even one of those things that's fake. We don't know yet, but what we do know. Oh, pebbles, pebbles. Maybe this hair ca hairdresser case out in California is fake. We don't know yet. We don't know. Pebbles. You should have never supported me. The case out in California is even one of those things that's fake. We don't know yet, but what we do know is what I was just saying. Everybody's getting fucking pantsed. So you've been lying, you've been cheating, you've been stealing, especially if you've been fucking kids, you fucking weirdos. You're all getting pants, and we're going to see exactly who you are now. Don't panic, kids. Don't freaking panic. I don't know. They just talk about, they just talk about way too much homosexual stuff. and They just talk too much. I think they just talk too much. Because there are those of us who are godly people. Who have on very pristinely clean underwears. Got godly people. They're the godly people. <laughs> Pebbles was paid to sue Phil. See, what Pebbles doesn't know is um, Phil paid me, then I paid Pebbles as an anonymous donor. That's how, that's how all this works. And when we get pantsed, we're going to stand there in our fucking underwear. It sucks because I had to pay taxes on it twice. Ruse, like we used to do when we were kids. And be like, yeah, check out my fucking Superman underoos. Aren't they wicked pisser? And they, aren't they wicked clean? You know, Dr. Z talks about this a lot too. When, when these fuckers come out. Dr. Z talks about this a lot too. <laughs> you are, that's you, dude. Just play your character and stop, and stop relating back to your other persona. That's so weird. Rest these haters, and now we got a lot of them because we got involved with the exposed Phil Godlewski movement. They're all like, oh, Bobby, you're a fucking pussy. You talk a big game. Yeah, come and fucking find me and tell me that to my face. And then call me a pussy and see what happens. You fucking. No, pussy. Like, I don't know. I'm not hunting you down to call you a pussy. I'll call you a pussy from right here. You fucking faggots. Anyway, we get a lot of hate, right? And uh, what we always say is like, listen, dude, you come after me physically or you come after me verbally. We're going into the fucking mud because I'm an old school guy. And we're going to get fucking dirty. The difference is I can get out of the mud and wash that shit. Right. You just make you, the difference is you just make shit up and other people have factual statements about you or you being the chaplain of the uh, 32nd degree chaplain in the Masons. That you just say shit about other people. This person's paid. That person took money. This person doesn't cover Phil anymore. This person defends Phil now. No one can show me a single... I put all of my life on the internet. And there's not a single clip of me doing any of these things? That seems weird. All right, we're going to get fucking dirty. The difference is, I can get out of the mud and wash that shit off. Can you? Can you? <laughs> uh, I don't even... I don't know what the first clip was you said. be Wednesday and Friday nights. And then Dr. Z finally gave me a little air time. And I took over Friday nights. Okay. Until Glitch in the Matrix had to move over there. And then uh, Alpha kept disappearing again. And whatever happened, happened. And now here we are. Old school Bobby is back Friday nights. We're going to keep it like this. Uh, pretty much now moving forward. Now that we're through a little busy time. and. Th 
He's more like old school bobbing for Cox. Through a little vacation That's what time. I'd call him. It's going to be Monday nights. Keep calm. The best is yet to come uh, with uh, Winters and Grow Wizard and the British American Patriot. We got Renee here, who's one of the biggest Grow Wizard fans in the land out there. Uh, and then Wednesday nights. <laughs> Someone over in the watch chat said, two Freemasons and a federal informant walk into a bar. <laughs> oh. This is going to be Patriots behind the mic. The two Freemasons are Scrip and uh, Z, and then of course the uh, uh, the federal informant would be the a J Sixer who got the absolute shortest sentence in the world. Kind of weird, huh? We had Conan, uh, Doctor Z had Conan on, uh, Conan that Tatarian on the other night. Make sure you check that out if you haven't seen it already. Wicked Pisser episode, dude from We Not Me with uh, Jason Q, and then next Wednesday, this coming Wednesday is going to be Jack. Imagine trying not to sound like Westboro Baptist Church when you say, uh, this is a comment over in Watt 2 from Incognito. It says, uh, we're doing God's work, you fag. <laughs> like, imagine imagine trying not to sound like Westboro Baptist Church. Oh, Jackie. You know, I'm trying to talk Dr. Z into letting me do that interview because Jack from We Know Me is pretty much like kind of we grew up the same. Like, he's a Boston kid. They claim that even though he spent his whole— so. Here's what you don't understand about Dr. Z. Dr. Z would change anything, do anything, give anything up, become anything, join any movement, anything to get a little bit of notoriety. So as soon as they saw Scott McKay, uh, he latched onto Scott McKay's bullshit. And of course, Scott McKay talks about the Mason. So suddenly he's not a Mason. And he repented through God and, and like he didn't spend... 20, 30 years of his life becoming a 32nd degree Mason and the chaplain featured in their newsletters. Like he just gave all that up. Just like I am. So, uh, you know, maybe Dr. Z will let me do that interview, but either way, that'll be Wednesday night. And then Friday nights, you're going to get your fill of old school Bobby talking shit about the faggots and the cunts and the weirdos and oh whatever else comes to mind on Friday nights. But we got a lot of new fans here since, uh, since I uh, hate the British American. I've never met someone who's like, even gay people don't talk about, homosexuality as much as these people talk about it. American Patriot is here in the chat. I haven't seen Winters yet. I'm pretty sure she's here. She was like, Bobby, please do a friggin' show tonight. I'm like, hon, I'm tired. So his name is, his name is obviously Dr. Z. We've covered him before, but his character's name is Bobby. And he keeps talking about Dr. Z letting him run the show because that's so funny because he is Dr. Z. <laughs> I wonder why this guy's wife did stick with it. I don't want to do no shows tonight. It's Friday. I want to take one more Friday off before I go start going crazy again. Imagine this guy who was, <laughs> who was married, who was married. I got a small dick. Oh, thank you. Wait till get home. She going to be like, damn, shit, my God. Dr. Z blocked all of us on X, so we can't even talk to him. Who's the pussy? That's exactly right. He blamed it on his audience. He's like, man, my audience came forward and said we used to have so much fun here and now all the people are arguing and we don't like it so you should ban everybody but then he said i'm i did ban all the all the underlings but i'm not banning will i will not ban will because i'm gonna fuck with him two days later i was banned two days later i was banned that was it he had a marriage he had a marriage that lasted about as long as i had a paper route as a 14 year old kid um, I wonder, but he tells me how I should speak to my wife. Thank you very much for the donation, by the way. He shows me how I should speak to my wife. Got it. Come on, Bobby, please, please. All right, honey. All right. Here I Hmm. Thank God Bobby's here to save us all. There was another video that has to do with these retards I was going to show you. Um, I don't, you may hate Phil, but when, <laughs> when Phil said two more days, tubby or whatever he said, I laughed out loud. When I read that post, I literally laughed out loud when he's like, two more days, Tubby. That was funny. It was just unexpected, I guess. Here we go. Here's a uh, script explaining to us. Q, digital soldiers. He took the oath. He took the oath under Flynn. The QAnon oath. Script keeper. 60 seconds and you have popcorn. So, FCB decode. This is for you, bro. So you can see. So basically. Because so, I was. The they do the same thing. So FCB decode called out Nick for going against General Flynn. So everybody comes out of the woodwork to, you know, so Script has to attack him. Z has to attack him. Uh, Nick posts weird things about this guy seeing his penis because that's what he does. He's like, well, I wonder if he saw my penis. 
he had another post saying, well, if he saw if he saw General Flynn's penis, I bet he'd suck it and I'd watch. It was just we I don't know. It's it's just so weird, so homoerotic. I can't explain it. I've never had any tie, any desires like they do. It's just weird. The dude that took the oath to the Constitution when General Flynn was doing it. I was a dude running around calling myself a digital soldier. FCB Deco, this is for you, bro, so you can see it yourself. Because I was the dude that took the oath to the Constitution. <laughs> hey, hey, script, script, can you hear me? No homo, but you got a beautiful penis. Yeah, buddy. Gulp, gulp. Gulp. I th I thought I thought maybe I embarrassed you. You got you got a beautiful penis. Um <laughs> This is the guy who took the oath. These these people I know I know people uh buy, sell, trade, live, breathe hopium. But Jesus Christ, these people were taking oaths to Q under General Flynn, and now we're supposed to trust them like they know something? Popcorn. So, FCB Deco, this is for you, bro, so you can see it yourself. Because I was the dude that took the oath to the Constitution when General Flynn was doing it. I was the dude running around calling myself a digital soldier for years, okay? Then I became a truther. I want a truther. I don't want no Got bullshit. It. Here, I'm old enough to remember Linwood being the first I have two badass friends that'll eat you up, FCB. <laughs> What's FCB stand for? Fully cock blasted? I bet you can't show me. Come find me at the good line, Dan. Person to have the courage to speak out against General Flynn. Let me read this again for you because you're like, it's disinformation is necessary, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Is your audience that stupid? Are people that stupid? I'm that irritated by people still believing in this bullshit. There's no plan. You know, to a nine, to whatever the hell it is, it's a damn good psyop. That's what it is. Michael Flynn. Yeah, basically. Uh, he finally told the truth. This was his brother. And he said, ask this question. If Trump did not give up... Listen, I don't think you can use someone's brother. Like, I think this is... I don't think you use someone's brother. My sisters aren't going to agree with my political beliefs. Um, Nick Alvere's brother turned him in uh, to the J6... Uh, for the J6 shit, to the FBI. I don't think you use somebody's brother anyways, but... Uh-huh. Why is Biden POTUS right now? I'm gonna give you my breakdown in a minute. You're talking about assets. Well, here, a lot of people had their assets taken, right? Right? There's Grok for you. Now I'm gonna just go to Pegasus, bro. That's all I need is Pegasus. But General Flynn's actually- They gotta stop using Grok as a source. If you don't know what Grok is, it is an AI account on, on uh, uh, Twitter, right? It's a AI research bot. So you can ask Grok a question and he'll give you an answer. But they got to stop using it as a source. We've all seen the mistakes that AI makes, right? When you ask it something. A lot of the AI-generated uh, answers, if they if they can't find an answer, they just make it up. We have even saw the attorneys that try to use AI to, to file uh, documents for their client. Like, Grok is just an AI bot that answers questions you ask it. So if you say, hey, uh, Grok, or hey, at Grok, you have to have, like, the upgraded account on Twitter. Like, you have to pay more for it. But if you say, hey, at Grok, was General Flynn's assets frozen? It would give you an answer like this. But they're not always accurate. Often, they're inaccurate. Um, we've all seen that happen. I don't know why they keep using it as a source. But then they'll yell at somebody who, like, sources something through Wikipedia and then actually checks the source article to make sure it's accurate. Um, nine times out of ten, Wikipedia is accurate, especially... If you see that little number beside it, it says 8 or 10 or 14, and you click that number and it goes to the source material and you check the source material, it's definitely accurate. Now I'm going to just go to Pegasus, bro. That's all I need is Pegasus. But General Flynn's actual quote was that Q did a disservice, okay? If you're talking to somebody that when I saw him take the oath to the Constitution with his family and stood up there, I was like, oh, shit, this is great. This is great. And then as time went on, he started looking it's great. Now, I'm going to bring it to another position so you can understand this. I am not one of these people that you talk about calling a fucking grifter. What, so General Flynn can make fucking money? All right? He can go make money, but somebody that makes movies, they're a grifter now because they make fucking movies, or they have a product, or they sell music, so again, or they sell a t-shirt. This has nothing to do with script. No one's called out script. This is my badass buddies who will, who will eat you up. 
he called out Nick for being a grifter and all the money he's made making these films, and then wants to call out uh, call out Flynn. Now you don't have to agree with that, but he's definitely made a shit ton of money uh, propelling a certain narrative forward uh, and refusing to answer questions. That was my biggest issue with him. Was at first I had questions, but then they don't want to answer the questions or they lie. In one of in one of um, Nick's tweets or one of Nick's Telegram posts defending Phil, he said he saw the messages, he saw the text, and they're not as bad as everybody keeps making them out to be. Then his answer, why did you defend Phil? He's like, oh, I didn't know. I hadn't seen the text and everything. You can't reference the text while defending Phil, and then your answer for defending Phil is, I, I, I didn't see the text. Like, if you can't answer questions or you're just going to outright lie and we can all see it's a lie, I'm going to ask the same question again. I don't ask a question unless I already know the answer, Nick. Now, I'm going to bring you to another position so you can understand this. I am not one of these people that you talk about calling a fucking grifter. What, so General Flynn can make fucking money? All right? He can go make money, but somebody that makes movies, they're a grifter. You got now beautiful they eyes. Or they have a product, or they sell music, or they sell a t-shirt. Now we're all fucking grifters? What's the American dream? And half of the people that you're calling grifters aren't fucking anons. Grifters? It's American dream. Do you have to be an anon to be a grifter? Whatever the fuck your definition of anon is, because I'm sure it's not a standard definition of somebody that's anonymous. Um, it's the American dream, guys. It's the American dream. I wonder if he'll make a case for Phil living the American dream. They fucking movies, or they have a product, or they sell music, or they sell a t-shirt. Now we're all fucking grifters. What's the American dream? And half of the people that you're calling. Um, if you want to, if you want to contribute to the show, you go to that website right there. that says coldbeer.fund. You click on it, and then uh, you can use any of the links on the left hand side of the page. These, all of these. Buy me a coffee is probably the easiest one to use. If you don't want it to pop up on the screen, you can just click this lower yellow button that just says donate. It's a PayPal checkout. You can send as much as you want, as little as you want, whatever. And grifters aren't fucking anons. So yeah, I'm cursing, dude. You get me pissed off. And, and the reason why I'm cursing is so you understand. You sound like a fucking idiot right now, bro. I think Nick probably would have done better if he'd have stayed the fuck. I, again, script, I don't, I don't have that much against him. I do think it's funny that he's calling out. He made a post about me. I do think it's funny that he's calling out um, Phil for check fraud at all, even though he committed check fraud. Like, you can do the other charges, right? You can do anything else that he's guilty of. But that's kind of the pot and the kettle, both being black. No? But I don't have that. But Dr. Z, I think Nick would have been better off if he'd never hooked up with that guy. That guy's a fucking leech. You're not questioning anything, and you're claiming to be... Yeah, I think Script Keeper is just dumb, if I had to guess. Dr. Z is dumb but in a nefarious way where he's going to propel his name up in lots your allegiance is disturbing your lack of faith is disturbing <laughs> q is supposed to be for us everybody's q the military intelligence is the q clearance now if you're really not true and military intelligence isn't q clearance i don't these are like basic things that we've been over if you want to get into it if you want to get that deep into it it's, it's pretty simple bro pretty simple fcb decode why is he not? I think it's funny. I hope they destroy each other. I just think it's interesting that his badass buddies, <laughs> Nick doesn't Nick doesn't answer questions asked of him. He sends his badass buddies to yell at you. In Trump's cabinet. And I'll make you a bet. He's not going to be in it. I'm just going to say that. Well, he was in Trump's cabinet until all the stuff with the FBI and, and stuff happened. And a lot of people believe he'll be in Trump's cabinet again. I don't know if he's making a play to run for president like everybody's claiming, then obviously he isn't. But it doesn't seem like he campaigned to be president. Let's go back to when they were trying to force him to do the Insurrection Act. That was never signed. We have to stay in reality, buddy. You, you know what I mean? Like, you're forgetting all of this. And there's a lot of things that people don't pay attention to. I'm so tired. I got uh -oh. A oh, thank you very much. So, oh, like three, six, like, six, thank you for that. Shit, so badass, wink, wink. You have a beautiful uh, penile arrangement there. This information is necessary. Shut the fuck up. That shit is corny as fuck, bro. Everybody wants truth now. We're seven fucking years into this shit. Everybody wants truth. You're seven years into it, and you're still peddling it, dude. You're still peddling it. Flynn could be the VP pick. A lot of people think that. That Flynn could be the v, uh, VP pick. I don't know. Nobody wants fucking disinformation. Go back to your boys and read them. Go back to your boards and read them. And read them. You got him, man. 
<laughs> you got him. I think it's weird that like some people are coming out. They they still peddle every conspiracy that Q people do, but then they claim like they're not Q. They're a truther. I'm not an anon. I'm a truther. But you have all the same beliefs. So you just believe everything, but you don't believe the guy on the internet predicted it all, I guess. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Um, let's see what's, uh, Trump's VP, uh, shortlist is very long and in flux. At a fundraiser in New York, Donald Trump asked donors what they thought of Arizona Senator Kerry Lake as a running mate. In recent conversations, the former president has appeared fixated on Ohio Senator J.D. Vance and Florida Senator Mark Rubio, New York Representative, uh, Elise Stefanik, former Trump cabinet official Ben Carson, and even former South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley are among some of the names on a lengthy list Trump has mentioned over the past several months. The presumptive GOP nominee is floating is floating them all as he weighs who the next potential vice president will be. Trump routinely asks allies, donors, and Mar-a-Lago members for their take. Sources said his interest in potential candidates is frequently changing and is often based on recent conversations with various allies. One day he's trashing someone, and the next he's asking allies about that person as vice president. Sometimes he's just curious what people think of them, one Trump advisor told CNN. In recent weeks, Trump has expressed increasing interest in Rubio, Vance, South Carolina Senator Tim Scott, and South Dakota Governor Christy Noem, according to multiple sources who have been briefed on the matter or have spoken to the former president about it. Trump advisors have indicated that the former president is nowhere near to making a formal decision on whom he wants to run with, the source said. Uh, Trump also not personally Trump has also not personally discussed the role with many of the names he has floated, according to conversations with people close to the potential candidates. While Trump volleys the names and potential candidates being uh, begin jockeying behind the scenes, his campaign has compiled a list of more than a dozen potential vice president picks to be vetted. But it doesn't seem like he's talked to any of them. Some people probably won't want it. One source described, I'm sure if you have, let's say you have 15, I'm sure there's at least one or two people that's like, nah, I don't, I don't really want to be vice president. Uh, one source described the list as unsurprising, indicated that it was composed of a number of names that had already been out in the public space, many of which Trump himself has floated. While the campaign is tracking names, multiple sources cautioned that the former president would ultimately make the decision on whom he would share the ticket with, whether they were vetted or not. Trump has indicated privately that he will announce a vice president pick in early summer before the Republican convention, three sources told CNN. Trump and those in his inner circle uh, had at one point considered an announcement of his running mate shortly after he had secured enough delegates to win the GOP presidential nomination. And advisors say that Trump may yet decide on an earlier announcement. Trump allies argue that there are pros and cons to each timeline. An early announcement would mean being able to potentially fundraise uh, off that selection, especially helpful as his, especially helpful as his team struggles to compete financially with President Joe Biden's campaign. Announcing later, though, can create suspense and increase attention around the former president as Republicans jockey to serve as his second in command. Recently, Trump told allies that it does not matter whom he picks as a, his running mate, indicating that it is him alone who will carry the 2024 Republican ticket. Uh, I think they kind of made him take Pence, um, but um, multiple sources told CNN. Well, this is an AP article, but damn, they reference CNN a lot. It must just be, I don't know, fed back through CNN. Trump knows that people are, who are going to vote for him are going. Uh, Trump knows the, that people who are going to vote for him are going to vote for him, and those who aren't are not going to change their mind because of a running mate. One source close to the former president told CNN. However, sources noted Trump's political savvy and said he would look for a running mate's potential to help him with specific voting blocks with whom he is more vulnerable. Who knows? Who knows? I guess it's still up in the air. Uh, Flynn, I think, is probably uh, is on the list. I think he's, he's even said something about Flynn before. Uh, but I would, I'm, surely he's on the list, I would think. Uh, but all the truthers are coming out against Flynn because he doesn't believe in Q anymore. Even after all the crazy stunts he pulled and shit, apparently now he doesn't like Q. Um, Candace Owens got fired. I don't know if you guys know, I have a long-standing history of hating Candace Owens. Candace, Candace Owens used to be a uh, actually a tree. 
uh, turned me on to this. Let's see. Uh, my alert. She just made a post about it. Um, here is Tree of Logic is who I'm talking about. Tree of Logic has is actually the first one that got me looking at a lot of this. So, Kenneth Owens used to be a leftist who started a website doxing people on the right that had been mean to people online. She started a website. She was left, and she started a website that doxed people on the right if they were mean to other people online. Not death threats, not stuff like that, just mean, right? If you were trolled or someone made fun of you or someone said something mean, she started a website for do doxing people on the right. Then when she saw that, like, black people on the right were like a hot commodity and she could make a lot of money and benefit from that. Suddenly, uh, she became all about Trump and black. People say and that's, all that. a, that's how you have to be black. That's how you have to be black. Listen to your psychological conditioning. If to be black, you can't speak in proper English or you're acting white, right? To be black, you instantly have to jump up like a fucking trained chimpanzee, excuse my language, like a, like a trained chimpanzee every single time the media runs a story and act angry and riot and talk about how pained you were to see this happening to black people, but keep your mouth shut. People say that's a... Uh, so Tree of Logic has been calling out for years. That they walked on water. Must, like the things that human beings fall for, right? So I had this idea when we were talking. When I saw her in Joe Rogan, I was like, what the fuck is this bitch? Because Charlie like, is, what is, she is talking about? an evangelical Christian. She I'm is not, an opportunist. Right? I believe sure. in, I, I. This super. So this is when she says she's not an a a evangelical Christian, but now she has like this religious grift she does as well. You're smart guys and evangelical Christian. Yes. So yeah. does he believe like Jesus came back to life? Yes. Really? Yes. He's an evangelical Christian. So right? he believes that someone died yeah. and then three years, three days later, yeah. they came back to life and that they walked on water and. Yeah. I, I, I mean, you have to, I haven't really gotten into it with him because I'm not like, I'm not mm -hmm. the person that should ever be like debating or, or talking right. about religion. It's not my mm -hmm. like shtick. Must, like the things that human beings fall for. Uh, anyway, she got banned or she got she got fired from the Daily Wire. Uh, and one of the reasons she was firing is is fired. She is taking an a pro Palestine stance, which is not enough to get fired over. But she's so into this a, a lot of the pro Palestine stance also operates around a bunch of anti Semitism and literal Nazis. So she, one of the things she did is she literally retweeted a tweet that claimed she liked, she liked a tweet. I'm sorry. She liked a tweet that claimed that a prominent Jewish pastor was drinking Christian's blood, like the blood libel theories where they're like, oh, they, they still are children and drink their blood. So there was a, there was a post that said, uh, you know, it's, it's March 4th. Are you, are you already drunk on Christian blood? And it was in response to a prominent, I can find the, uh, hold on. Anyways, oh wow, how was that not? Candace Owens, like tweet, fired for. Uh, she basically liked this tweet uh, about Jewish people. Here it is. It's this tweet that says, uh, Christ the Gnosis says, It's February 20th, Rabbi. Are you drunk on Christian blood again? Are you drunk on Christian blood? Now, she was tagged in that, and she liked it. And when asked about it, she said, Oh, I didn't read it. You, did, you didn't read it at all? Like, because most of it's about Rabbi, are you drunk on Christian? There's like four words in there that maybe you just like skimmed over. It's It says February 20th, Rabbi, are you drunk on Christian blood again? So she liked this tweet, which was an issue. So they made a statement uh, about her. Um, so Ben Shapiro can't actually fire her. Even though Ben Shapiro basically owns the Daily Wire, he can't actually fire her. This is the guy. Obviously, he doesn't look like that. He's dressed up. It says, what do you think of Rabbi Shumley's response to Candace Owens getting fired by the Daily Wire? So he dressed up what as what he thinks Candace Owens thinks Jews are. So giant nose, says filthy. He's got um, Israeli flags on his cheeks, whatever. 
Um, but they made a video. The uh, does the guy named Jeremy Boring, Jeremy Boring, um, Ben Shapiro can't actually fire her. Um, Jeremy Boring is the one who makes the hiring and firing decisions. I'm sure he has, he has some pull behind the scenes, but he's not the one who publicly fired her. And let's see if we can find the Jeremy uh, guy's video. Hold on. She's claiming that she's being fired for being, um, for being anti-war. She claims she's being fired for being anti-war. Um, I love the way that... And like, Here's oh, a look, quote. Name and men wear dresses. What is that? Mm -hmm. Stop selling that to the black community. I don't like that at all. I do think it's more... Uh, I do think it's more than that. Um, I love it's not anti war. That you and Ben Shapiro are able to disagree, but then I guess still have a business relationship. Because I saw him recently tell you, well, this was, I think it was maybe a few months ago, he told you to quit <laughs> over your uh, over your Israel coverage, your your Palestine Israel coverage. Yeah. What was that about? Well, he told me. Well, the the tweet that he responded to was actually just some biblical passages, mm -hmm. <laughs> and he thought that it was me saying that. I had to choose money over the day. I don't, I don't know how we interpret it, but it was it was definitely not, I just meant it as like, you know, peace, calling for peace, because, you know, there was a video circulating of him calling me a disgrace or in a faux professional or whatever yep. it was. And I decided to choose peace. And then when I chose peace, he responded to the peace with not, not peace. <laughs> so why wouldn't he just fire you? Well, as I explained on Tucker Carlson's show, like Ben doesn't have the power to fire me. Um, and it's not even saying that we disagree on Israel and Palestine. I just think that he's obviously, his wife is Israeli. Mm -hmm. um, he spends a lot of time in Israel throughout the year. I think when you have an emotional attachment to some place that sometimes your, your reaction to anything is going to be more extreme to it. You know, I have some relatives that are from St. Thomas. If what was happening in that region was happening in St. Thomas, I would probably be the most fired up out of everybody at the Daily Wire. Um, and yeah, he it was probably, she was running that website up until, um, she was running that website up until like a few months before she come out as conservative and started the Blackset movement. So that was the black people leaving the Democratic Party. I swear there's a, hold on, let me see if I can find the video. Maybe it was a statement, not a video. Maybe it doesn't exist. Maybe I imagined it. Here's what the Washington Post says. Let's see. Maybe I saw something here. Owens became a right-wing pundit. Then she started promoting ideas about Jewish people drinking Christian's blood. Prominent right-wing comment, uh, commentator Kenneth Owens has left the Daily Wire. The website founded by conservative commentator Beer Shapiro after months of promoting anti-Semitic ideas. In a statement posted to her social media Friday morning, Daily Wire CEO Jeremy Boring said the company and the pundit have ended their relationship. Maybe that's what I wrote. Maybe that's, that was it. He just read a, wrote a statement. Um, have ended their relationship. The rumors are true. I'm finally free, Owens said in her own post. The details of Owens' exit weren't immediately clear, but it follows increased tension over anti-Semitic rhetoric. That pitted Owens against Shapiro, who is Jewish, and the rest of the site's more mainline conservative figures. The Daily Wire didn't respond to requests for further comment. Owens couldn't be reached for an immediate comment. In a Thursday appearance on The Breakfast Club radio show, Owens acknowledged her strained relationship with Shapiro, but claimed that Ben doesn't have the power to fire me. Owens' split, up, split with The Daily Wire represents the latest example of a high-profile conservative figure contending with the expectations of a more staid employer. Last year, Fox News fired star host Tucker Carlson for reasons that were never made public, but which came after he promoted conspiracy theories and disparaged Ukrainian leaders. A telegenic presence uh, and pugnacious social media warrior, Owens, 34, first rose to prominence on the right for a commentary skeptical of the women who had been harassed during the 2014 Gamergate controversy that consumed the video game world. An unabashed booster and defender of Donald Trump, she launched campaign. She launched a campaign in 2018 known as Blexit to try to encourage black voters to leave the Democratic Party. In 2020, she joined the Daily Wire, a Nashville-based conservative entertainment conglomerate with a massive following. 
and ambition, ambitions to become a conservative alternative to Hollywood and immediately became one of its leading pundits. Her profile grew when rapper Ye, she still defends Kanye West and all that he does and says as well. Um, her profile grew when rapper Ye, formerly known as Kanye West, praised the way she thinks. Um, both appearing at the 2020 fashion show wearing matching White Lives Matter shirts, but Ye had already moved into his new role as an erratic provocateur, recently making anti-Semitic comments, if occasionally apologizing and speaking admiringly about Adolf Hitler. Meanwhile, Owens began to use her Daily Wire platform to promote anti-Semitism, claiming this month on her show that secret Jewish gangs are terrorizing Hollywood, and recently favorited a tweet repeating a lie about Jews drinking Christian's blood. She has also clashed publicly with the avowedly pro-Israel Sh Israel Shapiro by criticizing the nation in the wake of the October 7th attacks. Quote, I think it's been absolutely disgraceful, Shapiro said in a recording posted on X in November. I think that her faux sophistication on these particular issues has been ridiculous. Owen shot back on X that, quote, you cannot serve both God and money in what appeared to be a jab at her employer. Still, the November feud appeared to have been settled with Boring releasing a statement saying Owen's job is, quote, secured. But then it went away. So Candace Owens got fired. Oh, that was actually by uh, Will Sommer, the same guy that did the um, the Phil piece at the Daily Beast, Will Sommer. I didn't even know that's who wrote it. There you go. So Candace Owens got Speaking of rappers, what's the scoop on Herb Church going at Tom McDonald? I don't know. He also came out against Adam Calhoun, uh, which was weird, and basically called him out as never being there for him or whatever. But Adam Calhoun seems to think that they were friends and basically said, Adam Calhoun took it like a champ. He's like, maybe I have failed. Maybe I did do something wrong. If you got those receipts, expose me. Uh, put it out there. Like, maybe, maybe I did do something. I don't feel like I did, but maybe I did, right? Maybe I did, and if I did, put the receipts out there, blah, blah, blah. I don't, he's going after, I guess, he's going after Tom McDonald for kind of being a grifter and jumping on the movement, right? Like, oh, they, they'll they never take my flag and my guns, and he's not even from the U.S., you know what I mean? Riding around in a tank in a, in a fucking bulletproof vest. I thought that song was fucking cringy as hell. And Adam Calhoun's in that song, so he went after both of them, uh, I guess. And... It was like unsaid, it was unspoken about uh, Adam Calhoun when he kind of did this cryptic thing. And Adam Calhoun came in the comments and was like, uh, are you talking about me, bro? <laughs> kind of deal. And, uh, and made this video apologizing. But I don't know. We can see. I can't play Ryan Up Charge because I immediately get taken down. Uh, but we can see what he's saying, I guess. He wants people to react to his channels, but I guess if you don't have a favorable opinion of him, then uh, he gets his uh, music copyright company to claim your videos and take them down, which is pretty shitty, but whatever. Um, has he said anything? What is coincidence? Travelers, ghosts, and aliens? Oh, my God. I do not think Ryan Garcia is on drugs. Nashville Show reaction channels. Um, Angry Fingers gang take over digital streets. Stay frosty. Chilling in the new HB room. Man, I would like to see this one. Well, I got to see this one. Never mind. We'll just play it. It'll get claimed. Answer me this. You ever just sit back and think to yourself, like, when you're, like, reminiscing on your childhood or, like, a bunch of shit that's happened to you or a specific event that happened to you, you ever catch yourself wondering, how am I alive? Question mark. Or if you're in a position in life you thought you would never be in, do you ever ask yourself, how did I get here? Question mark. Or do you ever get in like a car or like just get a car and you've never thought of this car or nothing like that. You just ended up with this car and then you start driving the car and then you start seeing these cars everywhere. Even if it's the ugliest car in the world and no one drives it. When you get one, you start seeing them everywhere. And last example, do you ever think of someone and you haven't thought of this person in 10, 12, 15 years? I ain't seen them, I ain't talked to them. You ever think about them and go do something in your daily routine you do every day or every other day and you just so happen to see that person, you're like, what the fuck? What, what I'm getting at is coincidence. What is okay. coincidence? I know some people say stuff like um, there's no such thing as coincidence or uh, that's not just a coincidence. But what is coincidence? What is the act of a coincidence? And how do we have so many coincidences along our life? A coincidence is a... Um, 
it's a a remarkable thing that happens or event or circumstance that happens, but it doesn't seem to have a causal connection. Like nothing caused it to happen, but it's still a remarkable thing that happens either in an event or an occurrence or whatever, but it didn't seem to have any type of cause, right? What a coincidence that we have the same birthday. Um, no one caught, it's not like your parents and their parents met up to make sure they were both ovulating and they both, they both made to uh, made sure to have sex that night and you were born on the same day. It's a coincidence. What is the probability of how many quote unquote coincidences some one person has in their whole life it has to be an atomic probability or what if it ain't? Maybe it's not something that's even worth awing over. Cause think about this. Coincidences are most likely made up in our mind, right? Like, like I said, what a coincidence that we met and we have the same birthday. How many people on this planet think you think, I mean, look how many people are on this planet. Look how many days there are in a year. It's not that big a coincidence that you might find somebody that has the same birthday as you. If everyone in the world has coincidences all the time, then that is a very common function of life that we slip in and out of all the time, but we don't ever take time to understand it because we just write it off as something that is so unexplainable. And people ask, how, how did that happen? Or how did this coincidence happen? What if we should be asking, what is this coincidence happening? Mm, maybe it's manifestation. Do you see what I'm trying to say? I don't, I don't know how to word it really. Like what if coincidence is not like a, a thing that happens to a person and then another person and then another person. It's not just a coincidence happening. What if, a, what if coincidence is this energy field or some sort of um, like layer or a uh, filter or something that is over our cognitive thinking. And it's, it's not something that happens. It's something that is tapped into in certain moments. And we don't really know what it is. So we're like, eh, I mean, that was weird. And we write it off. Because if you think about the word coincidence, we have incidents oh, every day. But when you're not having that incidence, you're having a coincidence. Okay. There's a second version of you that does stuff either later than you are in present time or earlier. No, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. That's. It's an incident that not double, not two people, not a coincidence like a co-pilot. It's an incident that coincides with another incident that you think, man, that's weird. Coincides, not like co-pilot, that there's two of you running around. No, no. It coincides with, a, with another event. This event or this thing or this topic coincides with this other event thing or topic and those two things are like wow that's weird they kind of match up not two of you than you in present time which would go along with what deja vu so pretty much like when people have deja vu it's like people are like oh my god i feel like i've been here before or they'll be like yo i think there is a uh, white barn with um navy blue tin on it around this corner i feel like and then they go around the corner and there's this big fucking white barn with a navy blue roof you know how often i do that i think there's this um topless mother of three standing on the front porch of her trailer, smoking a Pall Mall around the corner. Then I go out there, boobies everywhere. It's a, it's pretty <laughs> pretty much a coincidence. And you're like, how the fuck could I have known that? In theory, it would be the version of you getting there before present you got there, which is why, which is why present you thinks to yourself, what made me think of that question mark? What if the answer is you made you think of that just not okay. the present you that you are. A different you. A different you. A co-you made you think of it because they must just be a little bit ahead of you. A co-op version of you. And if we have past, present, and future, and we are present, well, then there's a version of you that got the information before present you did. Who would that be? The future you. The same version of you that's able to give you the... Future you has all the information before present you. Feeling of this thing called deja vu because they received the information before present you received the information giving you deja vu i try my on your saddle dr j make examples the way i understand them because like look i know there's a lot of smart people on the internet you got all these like neil degrasse tyson his rambling coincides with gas station glass roses that's right and type people the elon musks but i'm a redneck from middle tennessee all right <laughs> so these these types of people who study this stuff all the time they say that we live in the past present and future at the same time and I don't really understand that until I think about cars and trucks. Okay. And I'll show you what I mean. So, like, maybe this is kind of how... Who says that? Who says we live in the past, present, and future at the same time? If 
if future you is able to contact present you, why wouldn't they give you some much needed information like uh, lottery numbers or that you're about to be in a car wreck? Works. Okay, so here's past, present, and future. Here's you in a vehicle. We have the ability to pump the brakes or hit the gas. We choose the speed, right? But if we want to go 100 miles an hour and we're cruising at 70, we have to hit the gas in the present time to get to the future speed of 100. So in in this very moment of you thinking of wanting to be at 100 miles an hour, you have to Is this a truck? have an idea of the future in the present to eventually get there and make this future your present. Ain't that some shit? And you know how some people say you shouldn't live in the past? Oh my God. Past. What if we are living in the past, in a sense? Because in order to make this truck go faster or have more torque, you have to have the idea in present time to go 100 miles an hour when you're going 70 in this time. These two swap. How to make it faster or slower is in the past. It is the collected data from these two things. Mm. So in order to make this truck different, more efficient, faster, more badass. Well, obviously we were all there in the past because that was us. I just don't, I don't get the leap you're making to the future. You have to have past, present, and future to, in fact, change the present to what you want this truck to be like. So really, you're... Nah, man, he doesn't clean the, he doesn't clean the, the powder out of the uh, light bulb. He smokes them out of fluorescence with the gas and everything. Using past and future to make your present how you want. So in theory, there is no such thing as coincidence. Coincidence is a made up word. For okay. To understand how to use past and future as tools for your present time. It's a theory. I know how people are. So in theory, time is like a vehicle and a garage. The present and the future is like a gauge cluster. Your present being the ability, the future being the outcome. And the past being the garage with the dyno, which will be used to tune or fix the specs of your car or your present time. Dang. But here's the thing. That's just if you want to make your vehicle better. What if somebody wants to make your vehicle worse? Your present time worse? Well, let's look at this again. So if you want to make your vehicle better and faster and fucking more badass, you got to go from here to here to the collected data and back to here. So it's present time, nah, 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 nah. If somebody wanted to make your vehicle worse, in theory, here's where they would do it the best. How? Well, if you start here and you get here and you're like, all right, what was the collected data? The collected data would be incorrect, but it'd be incorrect on purpose to make your present worse, to make your speed not what you want. Now, don't even think about trucks. Don't even think about nothing. Think about the world we live in. What do they seem to cover up the most? What seems to have the most incorrect information about it? The past. Our timeline of history. History is what? The past. Look, look at how they told, remember when they tore down, the, they were starting tearing down monuments and all this stuff and there was incorrect uh, history coming out and all this other stuff. What did that do? It caused chaos in our present time. And sure, people can be like, oh, well, well that kind of stuff's been what? happening forever. Yeah, but I'm 32 years old, finna be 33. I ain't never seen that many riots and fucking buildings on fire and shit like that. So if, if nothing, it was a spike of chaos. So if you can concentrate on these things, then you can, your present life would be exactly what you want, I believe. But here's the thing. For every good person, there's a bad person somewhere, right? So if collected data is being interfered with, then that means your present time is being interfered with. And if your present time is interfered with, then you really can't have a good idea of the future because the past or your collected data is being interfered with. So if there is people that know how to use the past, present, and future that's a lot of red, bro. I don't, it looks dangerous from here. To tune their present time, and they're using it for bad, they still can't touch the future. They can just kind of guide the future with these two, the past and the present. You got to think, if that happens, they're keeping you in the present. They're keeping you tangled up in the present. So you cannot see a good future clearly because this is so fucked where the present time is so chaotic because they changed some things here in the past that made the present so chaotic that nobody can actually have a good, clear vision of the future. And I mean, that would explain why so many people think the world's going to end. Maybe the present time we live in has been so tainted that... Oh, so the future me is telling me the world's going to... I bet it. I get it. I get it. see a future at all. They're like, fuck, it's going all right, now let's talk about ghosts, time travelers, and aliens. <laughs> what? What? The best mouth and uh, the best mouth in his neighborhood, for sure. Right. So first off, when you think about the history of time, I was gonna say trailer park. I usually say he cooks the best mouth in his trailer park. 
that he's a multimillionaire. So what do you think about? What does your brain go to? The past. Ghosts are from the past, right? Okay. Time travelers are from the future. If this is present time right here, look, look what is closest to the timeline of life. The past, right? Then you get the present, then you get the future. Here's my question. Why are time travelers, time travelers, why are they in a solid form like we are? Every story you hear, it's a, it's a, it's in physical form, just like me and you. And where are they? They're in the present time. Okay. okay. Well, if the future is a place. Time travelers are in present time. Place we can't go to. And the past is not a physical place we can go to. Then why is a ghost an apparition? And why is a time traveler in physical form like we are? Shouldn't a ghost and a time traveler both be ghostly apparitions? Or shouldn't they both be in physical solid? We've kind of talked about time travel before. If you if you figure out time travel, you also have to figure out instantaneous physical traveling, right? Because the Earth's moving. If I just go back a year from now and just in time, I would just pop out in the middle of space, right? You'd also have to figure out how to teleport millions of miles at the same time. So it would be time travel and physical teleporting to a different location forms that we could touch how are they different so myself obviously and everybody watching this video all of our starting point was in present time so if we are here in present time and this is the past and this is the future i could see how a ghost or an apparition could be a thing because when you die you become something of the past so I feel okay like you would function somewhere between the past and the present like i could i could understand that but i don't understand the time traveler thing if time is the line that we function on one, because there aren't time travelers. That's from the, future. the reason you can't. The reason you can't wrap your head around time travel. The reason you can't wrap your is because it doesn't exist. No one can. How are you in a time that you weren't even thought of or born in yet? How can you even come here? Not only that, remember you're in solid form. What the fuck? If you were able to travel in any time, why wouldn't it be from past to present, just like a ghost? So why isn't a time traveler the same as a ghost? And a time traveler is coming to a time he was not born in yet. And a ghost is coming to a time they didn't get to live to. Here's the weird thing. Both of those things are meeting in present time inside your brain. Mm. It's just an idea inside a person's brain in the present time. That's the reality of things. Here's us. Here's a time traveler. Here's a ghost. Why are they both meeting here inside of our brain? I mean, we can't go to these places. I mean, we know we can go. We, we know we can die. But if we die, then we're not here anymore. Wouldn't that apply to the future as well? I don't know. Let me know your thoughts on that. Let's move on to the yeah, if you die, you're not in the future either. <laughs> yeah, sure. That applies to the future. Yes. If you die, you're you're not gonna be in the future. Last topic. Aliens. Do I believe aliens? aliens? Okay. Not how most people believe in aliens. Do I think aliens, aliens are pedophiles that use spaceships to pick up illegal kids and the military and the government protect them. That's where his thoughts were at before the last time we watched him on this topic aliens were pedos protected by the government that basically drove intergalactic pickup trucks to kidnap children uh to torture them drive vehicles no i think everything that we've seen that everyone says is a ufo i do not believe that that's that aliens are driving them i think we are driving them listen listen don't bite my head off but this is coming from somebody who has had and has filmed ufos unidentified flying objects and i mean look i'm not talking way far away either this one time me and kansas rebel man on youtube we were driving through daniel boone national park at like three in the morning and we were sitting here joking we were joking about well if these things are i think i said something along the lines of well if these things are so damn smart then they can probably hear us talking about them right now and they're probably laughing their ass off and if they could hear us i wish they'd show themselves and it soon broke. That happened. For real. Look at that. that. Look at that goosebumps. This big ass weird look. It wasn't even like a fucking real shape. Daniel Boone National Park, I think, is in Kentucky. It didn't have wings. It had like, it's like if, hmm. It's like if you took a shark, the shape of a shark, like a great white shark, and cut the tail off. That's, that's what it looked like. And keep in mind, this thing was low. Like, would you ever drive through Daniel? How much of its tail? Because most of its body is tail, right? National Park, look how tall the trees are. It was about 30 feet above the trees. Actually, I'm gonna draw. I'm gonna draw for you what it looked like. By the way, okay. the way it moved was Thank like, you. like it was moving the same speed as my Dodge Charger down the interstate, but it was also kind of drifting in front. It was moving in two directions at once, the best way I can explain it. Even the person behind us seen it. The person that was following us behind, we waited a minute and I was like, bro, I'm gonna call them and ask them. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna see if they call and ask us. 
we let 10, 15 minutes go by. And I was like, man, I'm calling him. I said, yo. And she said, you can ask Kansas. She goes, did you see that thing in front of y'all? And I was like, oh my God, I'm getting the fuck out of here. This is exactly what this thing looked like, bro. Got, oh, okay. <laughs> this is exactly what it looked like, bro. Exactly. This is exactly what it looked like. <laughs> it's a shark if you cut the tail off. Apparently, he meant cut the tail off and keep it and, like, get rid of the head, I guess. <laughs> I don't know what the function is of this or why the colors is the way it is, but the back of it looked like... Like if you took tree sap and lit it up with a light, it didn't even look like fire or nothing. The thing on the front and the top looked like broken off like pieces of iceberg with a light in it. And then this was like a fucking, it wasn't black, it was like a gray color, like a flat gray. And then the windows, the windows looked like something, like a kind of light I ain't never seen before. It was like non-traveling light, like a moon. It just looked like soft matte white. Now keep in mind, you gotta keep in mind, like I think we drive these things, like keep that in mind. So as we're watching it, me and Kansas are both kind of like, what the hell? Because it lasted like a good 35, 45 seconds. I look down and... Oh no, we got hit on YouTube. Okay. Shit. We had to wait. It was playing a copywritten video. Damn it. Streams of Eternity Rock redirected. Damn it, I knew it. I knew it and said it. Fuck. God, right, I'm not going to lose my YouTube. I'm not going to get a strike over it. There you go, folks. We know what it, We know what she looks like. <laughs> We know what we know what she looks like now. I'd have to turn off YouTube to do it. This is why it's better to watch somewhere else than YouTube. Spot on again, Ryan. Love what you're doing. Great work. Real thankful and appreciate you. Thank you. You nailed it, young man. I'm 56 and it happens to me all the time. I can't explain why I'm so interested in you and the way your brain works. I truly don't think people understand how intelligent you really are. They always want to write it off as your delusional. She, she used the wrong form of your, the possessive form of your. You're delusional or on drugs. Uh, I've said it a thousand times. I truly believe you are a chosen one. If people stopped and listened instead of judging you, they might learn something. Never change, Ryan. I absolutely love you, kid. There you go. I got, uh, they hit me for playing his copyrighted video. Upchurch, when you said if they are telepathic, why can't they teleport? I spit my drink out my nose. I fucking love your logic. If they're telepathic, if aliens are telepathic, why can't they teleport? Ick. Huh? Huh? This is the same guy that spent weeks trying to convince people that he could light a light bulb with the power within his body. Then when people called him out and was like, hey, that's an emergency light. That's an, um, that's an emergency light, dude. You, it's a battery-powered light. He's like, what? People are saying they're battery-powered lights. What are those? What's that? Yeah, okay. Just let me go down to the store and buy my battery-powered light. Y'all are fucking stupid. Y'all are fucking stupid. They just kept calling people stupid until he knew he wasn't going to get away with it. And he's like, that was a test. That was a test. I would say 20% of you said, oh, whatever. It's a battery-powered light went on. But 20% of you were like, oh, my God, why is he lying to us? <laughs> it was so dumb, dude. There he is holding the light bulb. Watch him. Oh, you guys can't see it because chat. Let me do this. Okay, it resized everything. Now they find it. It should have went down somewhere. There he is. Watch him. He tried to convince people that it wasn't a battery-powered light that you can literally buy at Walmart. And then when people called him out on it, he attacked everybody else for not letting people figure out he was lying on it on their own. We should have let people figure out he was lying on their own, and we shouldn't have called him out for it. That was our fault, okay? That was, it was so weird. 
he was making like, he probably made like six videos trying to yell at people that battery powered lots weren't real. He even said, oh, I'm just going to run to the store and buy a battery powered lot. Yeah, you idiots. It was so stupid, dude. It was so stupid. I couldn't even believe it. Uh, I bet you he still got some on Instagram. There he is. His Instagram isn't copywritten. It was just, I don't know, dude. It was so dumb. It was so dumb. Him yelling at people over it. Like, oh, it's not a fucking battery-powered lot. Yeah, those aren't real. Yes, they are. Like, everybody's seen them. Or if you haven't seen it, Google it. Google battery-powered lot. He called me out in the shower one time and said that I wasn't manly enough and I was what's wrong with society. I wasn't manly enough to understand that they were going to lock us, lock all the, either lock all the illegal immigrants or lock us into Walmarts as a prison camp for some unknown reason. I don't, I don't, I don't even know what he's getting at. I think I, I had to have passed it. This is way old shit. I couldn't believe that he was yelling at people for being correct. And other people in the chat were like, yeah, that's part of your vibration, your energy. He was agreeing with those people. He's like, oh, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. What you're saying. You're saying that this. Here we go. Listen. Y'all, listen to what you're saying. You're saying that this light bulb can be charged. What is it charged by? There ain't no fucking hole to charge the light bulb. And look at it. It's a light bulb. So it's it's got a um it's got a rectifier in it. Basically, when you screw it into a socket, it charges it. And I also figured out how he was doing it on the end of extension cord. So basically, all you've got to do is touch the base. And touch the base, which would be the positive, and the side, which is the negative, and that turns it on. They also make a little screw-on button for it. But basically, when you plug that into a into a uh, into a when you plug that into an extension cord, the extension cord has two prongs on it, and one of them is the positive and the negative. And when you and you make a connection there, it lights it up as well. But you put it in a socket and you turn it, and it comes on, right? Okay. It don't charge like your iPhone. What are you talking about? It's not a push button. Look. It's a fucking an push button. Right Where's your fucking button at? So all you have to do is, is connect the two, the outside and the base. Or after all of that, even if that wasn't the thing, they make a remote for it. Right. All he's got to do is have it like under his foot or somebody sitting there with it, turning it on and off. They make a remote for him. He's got to concentrate. Got to concentrate. Here we go. Concentrate. Oh, boom. Bro, I can't believe they think there's a fucking switch on it. And clearly there's someone with him that he's yelling at right there. Hit the button if he's using the remote. Yo, listen to what you're saying. People who yell at others for having ideas don't have any good thoughts of their own, which is why they don't have any ideas. If you have good ideas for yourself, no word needs to be spoken. See this light bulb? So you can't call people out for lying, right? It's a regular ass light bulb. We're even gonna walk. It's literally not outside, so you know they bullshit. Come on. So if he does it outside, that's how you know it ain't bullshit. If he does it outside, clearly that's not bullshit because. Battery powered light bulbs don't work outside. <clears throat> Bro, this is gonna be cold. All right, you right, ready? Tilted right, back I'm gonna do to touch both parts. Move my hands right now. He's either got to push it in hard enough to connect both parts, or he's got to tilt it back to touch both parts. Because you're conductive. People who yell at others for 
and so I see a lot of guys getting mad, being like, well, dude, dude, are you serious? Go to sleep, man. Someone said you seriously need to get some help and lay off the oxys, bro. Go sleep, man. Cough drug, man. Why? Because you're embarrassed that a cow is a girl and a bull is a boy. So you're watching. Get some rest, man. Lay off the drugs. Why? Because you're embarrassed that a cow is a boy or a girl and a bull is a boy. <laughs> dude, he's dude, he does all the drugs. Girl and a bull is a boy. So you're walking around saying you're a girl boy. So you're mad at me because of that. And I'm the one who's fucked up, right? And there's no witchcraft out here that's fucking your brain up, right? This is for people who call themselves cowboys. You're basically saying you're a girl boy, and that makes you trans. Okay. Witchcraft. Well, if it's not the case, well, then I guess your ass can climb up a mountain with a broke back, huh? Yeah, a Get broke it? back mountain, girl boy. So I see a lot of Get guys it? getting it. Girl boy. Being like, well, dude, dude, are you serious? Witch, it's sleep, witchcraft. Sleep, it's witchcraft. Drug, people who yell at other Twitch keeps videos for like 14 days if you want to watch a replay, but the replays will also be on YouTube as well and uh, Rumble. Church, we don't compare to NK. Every single day our military is marching in formation, healthy, and beast. We don't blast it on TV. For Oh, this is about where he was talking about how, how strong North Korea's military was and how weak our military is. We don't compare to North Korea. Every single day, our military is marching in formation, healthy and beast. We don't blast it on TV for all to see, but I promise you it happens daily. This is, this is what um, people were kind of uh, against Trump having these gigantic military parades that he wanted. Usually, these gigantic military parades, show of force parades, are, are authoritarian dictators, right? And it's basically saying our military is huge, and if you, and if, if you do anything against us, we'll take you down kind of deal. But church says people should see it to restore the art of pride and spirit because seeing y'all do that would make the people in the country stop trashing it. Nobody has had a tear to their eye, which is why they won't shed one for anyone else. Of course, our military walks, marches every day. Of course, our military goes to the field and, and shoots and, and fucking drives around missile launchers every day, but we don't. We don't do gigantic parades and broadcast it everywhere. You can say it's the rich people's fault all you want. It's your fault for thinking money means you're rich. A man who knows what's good for himself will suggest what is good for you. Whether you like him or not, you need him. There's nothing. This has nothing to do with politics and everything to do with the state of emotional chaos we are in. He is a figure. He has figures. He speaks figuratively and logically, which means he is enlightened to all terms of rich, whether soul or wallet you seek, he will get you down whichever road you want to choose. You just got to let him show you how to pave again. Ryan up church, everybody. This dude does all the drugs, all the drugs. God isn't a man. It's the good spirit and emotion of all a God and God has created earth through willingness, love, and temptation, hint the name Mother Nature. The Bible is a by-product of a real story of knowledge of earth, and man was given in his thoughts in a miraculous timing that was stolen and changed by dark arts to make people walk directly into darkness due to this, due to this spirit's jealousy. The color of good men is red. The color of goddess is green. And the world we are living in has gotten too blue due to the contrast being changed around us. People have been saying amen to a woman goddess who gave birth to us for hundreds of years and not looking at the omen we are given to see the light side of our brains or the scripture missing that was entirely written about her. And you wonder why guys are becoming weak and wearing dresses and why women are becoming tougher. See the light. 
if not your dark art is about to crumble and that doesn't hurt all of us holding a big ass shining light the only thing fading is a shadow that was a poem written by Ryan Up Church. Thank you, thank you. Mother Nature gave us a weed to feel good. It's harmless, and they renamed it Devil's Lettuce, and they won't let us smoke it. And you think I'm a, I'm illiterate one? You meant I'm the illiterate one. You think I'm illiterate one? Look at them. Look at them, y'all. You see what they're doing? Oh, you're unraveling your own drug. Wah. Hey, that's the half of the Bible that's true. They warned us about you, stupid fuck. Wait, that's the half of the battle that's true, so you are you are on drug? Wait a second. Wait a second. Look at them. Look at them, y'all. You see what they're doing? Oh, you're unraveling your own drug. You're on Ritalin, you're on drugs. Hey, that's the half of the Bible that's true. They warned us about you, stupid fuck. Look at him. That's the half of the battle that's true, so you're on drugs? Hey, Tom McDonald, you better get your notepad. And he calls out Tom McDonald. I'm coming for you. Nobody thinking like I do like so this you song. On the fence, my language arts gun wrecked, holding infinite. Then after I conquer, I do like the song. Conquering everybody else that thinks they can't be. Hey, Tom McDonald, you better get your nose. Smile away. Watch your cap size. You. I don't know. I like it. Like this. And then he does his uh, coat, the real coat of arms, not one of those fake bullshit ones you got. I do like that song. Right, so I just figured Here we go. Out. Remember about remember yesterday when we were doing the light bulb thing? So if your hands are cold, Here we go. It won't, it won't work as fast as if you heat them up. Watch this. More light bulbs. See how it's not coming on? Watch this. Heat. Heat. Moisture. Moisture is conductive. Oh. Not heat. Moisture. Oh, watch how long it takes. Somebody says the whole light bulb, the whole light bulb mess has to be a little fucked up. I haven't really said anything so far because I 100% agree with bro on everything, but this light bulb got me folded. I really don't know why it's coming on. I don't, I don't know. Makes me question uh, SM right now. Something right now, I guess. What does SM stand for? I think people who don't believe him are kind of illiterate. Laugh out loud because what happens after you rub your socks on carpet? It makes static charges so that, so with that being said, I bet you all didn't know men's sperm as conductors in our bodies definitely can transfer power. I don't know. Why would he have men's sperm on his palm? Thanks. No, watch this. Social media. Got me questioning social media right now. Okay. I don't know. I just Thank you. That. that was pretty cool. Okay, look. Here's here's the one he does. Is so all he has to do right here with his extension cord, if that bulb is charged, is the two prongs on the end of it. He just got to connect them with his fingers. That's it. If you unplug it, it goes off. All right, he okay. throws it out of view. Watch. Now watch. There you go. That is not magic. Okay. It's not. I honestly think somebody's doing it with her remote right now, but. It's just how it works. Okay, look. I have behind me two plants. One of them. Wait a second. Water. Water bulb. I swear I think it's the matter of the remote. But wait till he yells at us for figuring it out. Yeah, the second time, the timing off for sure. I hope that video's on here yelling at us. They're falling out of control. <laughs> hey, Ryan, I'm curious. Now you said that the Romans owned the pyramids in Africa. No, Egypt, not Africa. <laughs> and the Native Americans owned the pyramids. In the Wait a States. second. What do you mean Egypt, not Africa? That's a, that's going to be an issue. No, Egypt, not Africa. <laughs> and the Native Americans own the pyramids in the United States. Yes. Now, the Romans came over to help the Indians, and they both got messed up. 
Yes. Okay, we well stop the story there. So Ryan's up church. Ryan up church's uh, coat of arms. He believes that what this guy just said. The Romans had the pyramids in Africa. We, it, they are in Africa, uh, Egypt in Africa, um, and that the Romans came over before the founding of our nation to hang out. They didn't die. They were, didn't go extinct. They weren't. They weren't killed or whatever. They they came over to the Indians to help the Indians, and they built pyramids and settled in Nashville. And that's where Ryan Upchurch's lineage comes from. Is the Roman. Indian, uh, Native American pyramid builders of Nashville. And to show proof of this, he shows a pyramid in Nashville and a college, like Roman artwork in Nashville that was built when the World's Fair was there. Now the Romans came over to help the Indians and they both got messed up. Yes. Okay, well you stop the story there. Who were they fighting and who messed them up? Because that's an important part of the story I want to learn. <laughs> Oh, is that right? You sure you don't already know and don't want people to know? I think oh. that's what you really do. He's part of the system, right? He's been bought off. It's a narrative war. Just say it, Ryan. They literally had a system in which they can identify people who... The, the comment on this video says, Egypt is a word they created to cover up the pyramid's truth gets the knowledge they literally had a system in which they can identify people who they call adept initiates people who seem to have some type of um ability to perceive things at a higher level or retain knowledge at a higher level or just perfect some type of talent, that makes sense you know, or ability and those people were literally handpicked yeshua aka jesus was one of these students as well if you look at the read the gospel of the holy 12 you'll find that when he disappeared from the bible where did he go? He went to Egypt. I've taken many people to the actual bed that he slept in, which is still there in Egypt. It's a shrine now. And he was there learning the Egyptian mysteries. Well, I'm open-minded to anything. I have to know how you came up with there's a cross missing from the pyramids. But how do you get a Christian cross on top of pagan monument how do you get a cross on top of a pagan monument uh -huh. you put it back up there egg man ain't you got something to do go chase sonic the hedgehog okay got him there got him there he kind of looks like Eggman. where did he go he went to egypt i've taken many people to the actual bed that he slept in which is still there <laughs> it's a shrine now. and he was there learning the egyptian mysteries Dude, I remember when fuck, I used to see guys all the time wearing affliction shit. And this is well known, well documented. I mean, that was an apocalyptic text that was like. I'm glad I don't see people wearing it anymore. What do they say? Don't judge a book by its cover. No, you should judge a book by its cover. This book makes Always. knowledgeable that only half of this book is true. Only half of the Bible's true. Judging by this. So he found this old book that was from like. These crazy religious, uh, like, puritists that was about social functions, about what you should do if you have, like, a church party or a church get-together with just, with just boys, with just girls, with boys and girls. And he tries to relate it like it's some type of gift from God that was left for him to interpret the Scripture. You know why? It's holy. It has holes poked in it. Oh. So you don't understand all the words. It's holy. Got holes poked in it. Got it. Healing and energy healing with his hands. They came down through India. I'm the walrus. At the age of 32, I called my son out of Egypt. That's what the Bible says. You have no idea who I am. I'm the lizard king. The loop that's missing out of there, 12 to 32, that chunk is missing out of, in the gospel of the Holy 12. Again, he also was had the Mason knowledge. Now, the knowledge is any knowledge I'm going It's not a weird thought to me in any way. It just comes and goes. It's like a weird thought that's mm -hmm. a symptom of my brain. And so it could control man I had to use it for darkness. Be quick, we'll make you stupid with curriculums at school And if the classroom doesn't do the trick, we'll make you watch the news Pick your team, right or left, pick the red pill or the blue You can vote, but even if you win, still everyone will lose So, we have a situation with night Just random clips of shit, dude He says what he says 
uh, entities. You tell me what's going on. Five he, years says what, he says what he says and does what he does mm -hmm. because he is proving to everybody that social media is so, let's jump on this and fucking trash it. Mm -hmm. Bro, the man has... He gets millions of views. Millions. Right? Instantly. If That's him talking somebody, about Tom McDonald five it. years ago. It's because, but what does Tom do? Tom stays to himself. Yep. Tom reads. Tom is smart. So when everybody's like, oh, yo, yo, fuck this guy. He's so stupid with his fucking, his pink braids and his ski mask. Well, I think that book actually said something about unification church or some shit like that. Everybody's like, oh, we can't wait for this fucking new song with you and Tom. You fucking smoking crack, you dumb motherfucker. You must be. And good luck beating me with words. You can't even beat me with the words on Tom's face. <laughs> By the way, Ryan recorded a song with Tom McDonald. And his own followers are like, hey, you recorded a song with Tom McDonald. And he tried denying that he recorded a song with Tom McDonald. So then they start sending the link to him of like, yes, you did. It was two years ago. Here's the song. It's up on your YouTube channel. So then he took it down and still denies that he did a song with Tom McDonald. Like he did an actual song with him. And it was one other person. They put it up on Ryan's YouTube channel. It got millions of views. And when called out about it and sent the link, he just deleted it and still pretends like it wasn't real. <laughs> Hog, yeah, yeah, that's it. That's what's going on. Well, I got this. I got this secret song coming out with somebody who has a fucking type of meat tattooed by their lips. <laughs> it still exists on YouTube. Like people reacting to it and stuff. Hold on. Um. Of course, his diss track's going to bury it now, but um, there was people that were uh, had reacted to it and played it. The biggest gimmick in music history, Up Church, got dissed, Tommy Donald said they got, I forget what it was called. It was, um, I used to have the name of it memorized, but that's the first thing I did was go look it up because I didn't know he had, there it is, Up Church featuring Tom McDonald and Struggle Jennings. It was from Traveler's CD. That's the song right there. It's on Ryan Upchurch fan music, but he took it down off his shit. Isn't that crazy? And still claims it didn't happen. Look, it's it. This is even the this is even the single album Travelers Upchurch featuring Struggle Jennings and Tom McDonald. But he just deleted it like it didn't happen. The this is crazy. When he ran off all his family, he ran off all his, like, his mom, his dad. He doesn't talk to him anymore, and it's just him and his producer. Now, his mom claims that, so Ryan claims that his mom is stealing all his money from him. She claims that, like, she did invest in some houses and put people in them to rent them to make money for Ryan because she didn't know what to do with all the money. It was just sitting in the bank. Um, Ryan claims that she bought way more houses than just like two or threes. He was like showing up at people's houses and saying, I own this one and I own your house and I own this house. It was so weird. Um, but when he ran everybody off, Ryan's mom claims that his producer is the one that keeps him fucking doped up and on, and on uh, Ritalin and all this shit to keep producing shit. And when that became the only person he's got left with him, it did get substantially worse. Like he was calling like... Uh, missing 16-year-old girls not real and that it was a GoFundMe scam and the YouTubers were putting it on while, while they were literally searching for her uh, missing body. But it got so much worse when he ran his mom off. I confused on my view on the Bible. Here, here's what I mean. I'm not saying the Bible is not true. I'm saying it's not true as it stands now because it could be truer if the rest of the true stories were in there. Okay. There's a whole chunk of the Bible how do you, is he taking a bathtub with a quilt? I know I asked this last time I played this video, but is he taking a bath in a bathtub with a quilt?
Ryan from the past didn't communicate with Ryan from the future on this? Apparently not. Bible missing about Jesus and Egypt. Why that part's taken out, I don't know. I'm not Jesus, motherfucker. And here's another thing you cannot deny. All right. So all you folks out there who follow the Bible. He says, I think, yeah, I don't know if it's this video or a different video. He says that churches now let homosexual people in for money. But last I looked, like churches don't turn anybody away, right? They take, they take murderers, they take blast, they take everybody, right? That's where they're supposed to come to hear the gospel. Well, the Bible says really bad shit about gay people, right? Yeah, but for some reason, you change the Bible when they come to your church. It might be this way. Yeah. You're like, oh well, you know, some we don't believe everything. Oh wait, 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 wait! I thought you followed the Bible. See what I'm saying? By the way, that tattoo uh, above his eyebrow there, that tattoo was after he ran his mom off, and it says, Mama Never Tried. Because there's a song that's like, Mama Tried. Well, his says, Mama Didn't Try or Mama Never Tried, one of the two. I don't have a problem with gay people. I'm actually backing gay people up when I say the shit that I'm saying. Whose fucking business is it anyway? So what, you don't want to put... Super, Ryan Upchurch is super famous. Like, he has a bunch of music. He did it without... So you you don't see him on a whole lot of press tours because he did it without signing a contract and stuff. Uh, but, yeah, he he he's put out a bunch... He's got a huge follow, Millions of followers. Made millions of dollars on music. Does tours. Uh, plays songs. My, um, my niece and nephew that just had... Or my nephew and his girlfriend that just had the premature baby, they were just selling tickets to a show in Knoxville the other day because... They obviously can't go now. They got a baby in the NICU, but yeah. Yeah, I don't wanna have smoke you, but Map of Nashville. All this says is good sounds in the background. She's reading a book. I'm writing one. Things like this bring you to the peace you didn't know you needed. Did Phil buy the tickets? N no. Why would Phil buy the tickets? I thought he was writing a book. Is he playing music and writing a book? All right, so check this out. The pyramids, right? Everybody's like, how were they built? I have a suggestion. Okay. All right, how were they tool, built? This shape right here. A lot. When back in the day, old men used to say when somebody wasn't thinking correctly, they would say, "Boy, what's wrong with you? You ain't firing on all your cylinders." Okay. Cylinder. Think no, about it. not not it's the same. Not not the same cylinder. Okay. Oh, like a joke where he buys everything else out. I gotcha. Well, um, that's not the same. When you say you're not firing all your cylinders, it means like you've got to miss like a car engine. They're not saying like a cylinder, like a tube. When somebody wasn't thinking correctly, they would say, boy, what's wrong with you? You ain't firing on all your cylinders. Cylinder. Think about it. This is what they use fence posts for, right? So if I had a pole right here, and this was a bunch of mud. Well, that's right? not a cylinder. They obviously knew how to that's build fences. So you could build like a fence out of these posts all the way around it to encase it in. Then, if you do that, you get another post from here to here would not be linked together. You'd be like on some kind of chain or rope, right? Wait, wait. We know we know the pyramids weren't built by fucking rafters. <laughs> like, <laughs> the, the pyramids don't have hip and joint rafters. A big piece of a tree. Well, so you got the fit. You know all here. the gigantic trees that they had ready access to in... Egypt. You got the pole in the middle. You got the mud. He's building a teepee. Well, as you take it and you roll these poles around this, it will start to shape the mud. Okay. <clears throat> so they did it. They did it like icing a triangle cake. They put a bunch of icing in the middle. They took a tool and just spun it around that pyramid. Boom. Now, imagine. Now. 
but you you realize that the pyramids are made out of block. Then they had a smooth like lime or whatever uh, limestone coating across it to make that shape. I don't I don't think that's how it worked, Ryan. Now imagine this pole, right? Okay. If I was sitting here and it was tilted and I was rolling. Are we sure that's fudge? He has lost his mind. Maybe he just took a shit on the table and he's playing with it. It, it starts to take. Somebody said, is this Britney Spears 2.0 that we are witnessing? Another Terrence Howard incident, maybe? Oof. 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 Ryan, don't shit on your table. This is a bad angle you got to set here. It starts to take the form of a pyramid. You keep packing that fudge. You got it. So, once you build the mud up, build the mud up, because you got to think. When the That's his up, mega tutor. <laughs> it's not strong. On top of that mound, or start digging on the inside and making room. Some of these people are, are kind of funny to watch their videos, but I mean, I honestly hope he gets help. I used to, I, I'm not a huge fan of like country or country rap, but there's some of his songs I like. I like the one that he did, the diss against Tom Donald. Tom McDonald, it's like catchy, gets stuck in my head when I hear it. And if that's the way, why they capsize? Case and they built it like that, then definitely pyramids would have been built onto longer and longer and longer and longer over the years. And someone says, I understand what you're saying, but the pyramids are mainly limestone. Archaeologists have even said that the stones were cut. Also, you got to understand. The time you're talking about and the people of that time, they wasn't occupied with jobs, cell phones, etc. Some of them probably spent most of their life or all building said pyramids. Yeah. Generations were, probably worked on some of the pyramids. Like your dad worked on the pyramid when you were born and you grew up and worked your whole life on a pyramid. And that's why there are shafts that are covered up that they say are like these booby traps. It's really not a booby trap. It's probably uh, like a cavity almost inside of a structure. It probably isn't able to be scanned because it's being covered up by these compositions of calcium carbonate and stuff like that. Yeah. Because, you know, they say that because, you know, they say because, you know, they say that the, bunt the pyramids. Uh, the minerals and stuff in it make the stone and stuff con or like high conductors of electricity, right? For higher con I do think one of the cool modern marvels of our time, or I guess ancient marvels of our time, is Roman concrete. I don't know if you guys ever looked, but like, like Roman concrete stuff, like the aqueducts and shit, is like still there. And scientists believe that, uh, or at least this is what I read, scientists believe that one of the main ingredients in concrete is lime, right? And they weren't good at thoroughly mixing their concrete, or at least this is be doesn't believe that they did this on on uh, on purpose. But maybe they did. But anyways, they weren't they weren't very good at thoroughly mixing their concrete. Now, when we make concrete, we mix it really, 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 really well. Uh, back then, they would just be chunks of lime that were mixed into concrete mix they couldn't they couldn't get it like down on on like a microscopic level mix well so when concrete is damaged or a chunk falls off or whatever now when the rain hits it, it rain erodes concrete over uh, you know hundreds thousands of years when the rain hits it and reactivates the lime and it beca it flows again into the cracks into the joints into the missing pieces and rehardens and it's almost like self-healing concrete um, which is interesting. Ducting electricity areas, it would need a better machine to x-ray it. And maybe once upon a time, somebody who thought they had a good x-ray machine Pyramids are not power plants. was exploring because they thought they had the map to where they needed to go. Floor broke or something. Somebody fell through one of these cavities. The person they witnessed it got scared and said, bro, there's booby traps in here. Now, what's at the pyramid that used to be in Nashville? Yeah, so that's where they got that's where they got their part of their mixture that ends up having the lime in it was ash and uh, crushed volcanic rock. It has a balcony and columns, right? Nowhere else have I seen a pyramid that has columns like that. Well, 
People look at the Pyramid of Giza all the time, and they're like, how'd they build this? It says, mineral deposits come lime class found in ancient Roman concrete give the material self-healing capabilities that could help engineers develop more resilient modern concrete and reduce its associated emissions. If it healed itself, it would make less emissions. It's fair to say the ancient Romans knew a thing or two about infrastructure. They remained the first to refine the basic elements of lime, shell, clay, and aggregate rocks that we call concrete today. Then they poured billions of tons of it to build one of the greatest empires in human history, uh, iconic relics of which, of which still stand across modern Europe. But did the Romans also hold a secret to help concrete structures such as the Pantheon, the Colosseum, endure more than 15 centuries of climate change? Research led by Massachusetts MIT Tech, uh, MIT has found evidence they did and discovered they could have implications for reducing carbon emissions. A recent study published in the, sci in the journal Science Advances, experts at MIT and Harvard University found that calcium-rich mineral deposits called lime class, commonly found in Roman-era concrete, gave buildings and structures a previously unrecognized self-healing capability, which is insane. Like, we don't do that nowadays. Uh, but they did it back then. That's 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 crazy. If the columns were sitting in front of it or hooked to it, and they took that piece away, then they took the tool away for you to figure out how to build them. Which is why all the old Roman buildings have columns, and the pyramid mm. in Nashville had columns and a balcony. And then some people. The pyramid in Nashville was was modern. It was built in modern times. He keeps talking about the Pyramid of Nashville. It was built for a World's Fair. They built like a pyramid and a, and a mini coliseum. And like after the World's Fair of Nashville or whatever was over, they decided that they wanted, to, I think they wanted to keep the coliseum, but they tore down the pyramid. They wanted to keep that. He also claims that because any, any, any cities are named after any other cities, that may have been in Egypt or around the world or whatever, that's that's a sign that that we're linked to them somehow. And not just a naming scheme. I don't know. This guy's this guy's wild. Um I was trying to find there's a picture somewhere here that he posted recently of his um his producer B loose. He's a little guy. He's tiny. Um, he's like a, like a Mexican looking dude, but God, he's short. Um, he was thanking him the other day for something like some awards. There he is. So that's his producer, b -Loose, who his uh, mother says his mom actually dated this guy, which doesn't really like go to her character uh, much, but his mom dated this guy and his, and the mom claims that this is the guy that's basically a kid him strung out uh, telling him to leave his family, uh, uh, the, to leave his family or to call his family out, convincing him that his family's up to no good, trying to steal from him, trying to do this, trying to do that. And there's a court case going on right now between him and his mom. He claims that he never knew that she was investing in properties, also claims that she bought like 50 properties. She claims she bought like two or three properties, put renters in them, and the renters were people that worked for her and Ryan anyways, like her assistant, Ryan's assistant, you know, some, some family friends that they knew would pay rent and take care of the place. And that was, that was because so much money was coming in, she didn't know what to do with it, but she thought maybe this will end one day and Ryan won't be famous and won't have, you know, uh, all these fans, so I might as well invest in property. And she did that. Now, you could say that's weird that she didn't, like, run every purchase by Ryan. But when Ryan made her the accountant, he, he literally, there's a video of him saying, like, I don't know what to do, so I just told my mom to just do whatever with it. And that's what she did. So they're in court right now fighting over all of this. But uh, the mom blames b who is actually her ex-boyfriend, um, for tearing them all apart and whatever but ryan of course loves be loose because that he owes he owes a majority of his career to him i don't know it's just all weird it's all weird um that's the story with ryan of church he is famous a lot more famous a lot more wealthy than me um a lot more followers so according to dr z and nick that means he's right and everybody else is wrong because dr z finally got over eight thousand followers on rumble uh, but that's the story. Guys, thanks for joining us. I'm out of here. Thank you for the donations and support that come in tonight. 
I appreciate it. We'll get to some more uh, hardcore topics this week. Um, I think I'm going to investigate some more t people who have ties to Phil, maybe. Um, either way, I've got some other projects planned and some days off I'm going to take, I think. Um, everything's picking up. Please consider contributing to the show. If you want to contribute to the show, you want to keep it going, you like what we do here, the way we pay the bills, it's 100% funded by you. It's very rare that I take a sponsorship uh, just because I, I get offered some, but they're usually not worth my time or something that I, I don't want to try to sell to you guys. Uh, uh, it's just not, I don't know. It's not something I think will bring you any benefit, so I don't do it. But um, you can keep the show going by cold uh, by going to coldbeer.fund uh, and clicking on any of the links to the left-hand side and making a contribution to the show. That's how I pay the bills around here at the office, the internet, the electricity, all that stuff. Uh, if you're interested in that, go to coldbeer.fund, make a donation. We'll see everybody on the next one. Have a good night. Thank you all for joining us. I appreciate it. See you guys later tomorrow. Hope you had a good weekend. See you guys. Hey, Vern. I can tell you this. I haven't, uh, I haven't hollered at you in a while. Hey, Vern. This particular show, you don't have the fourth. Sorry about my fake accent. I can't turn it off so the show's actually done, done. By name. Right. Tell them exactly. I got to wait. And tell them the rest of the world, ah. that you don't have the fork and balls. You don't have the balls. Okay, Scott. Here we go, I think I started some shit. Piss them off, it's about to get lit. Get the place in the best, you know that stage is set. You better buckle up, cause you ain't seen nothing yet. Here we go, I think I started some shit. Piss them off, it's about to get lit. Get the place in the best, you know that stage is set. You better buckle up, cause you ain't seen nothing yet. And they say that I'm a lunatic. Well, listen, bitch, I came equipped with a quick wit and a six sense for the stupid shit. Where my true believer? Y'all need Jesus. Praise the Lord, head to the extreme. All these false fucking prophets who profit off of gossip. Worshiping Trump's cock and begging for a throat deposit. Swinging fucking knee hammers like four and a thong. He's strapped to the shaft, eating his chest like he's King Kong. Starving for attention, I'ma make your gut burst. I'll be your huckleberry, I can quench that thirst. Baby eating lizard people, alien sex. What's next? Trump in a dress, fucking Flynn on his desk. A retard in a vest, climbing up 5G towers. Cause you told him if he did, he'd get fucking superpowers. Here we go, I think I started some shit. Piss them off, it's about to get lit. Get the place in the best, you know that stage is set. You better buckle up, cause you ain't seen nothing yet. Here we go, I think I started some shit. Piss them off, it's about to get lit. Get the place in the best, you know that stage is set. You better buckle up, cause you ain't seen nothing yet. I used to find clues too when I was high on shrooms. I found myself a tunnel that led to Jason Q's bedroom. Open his closet, I found some of his meat rockets. I strapped it to my shoes and then I flew through the roof. I found myself in orbit strapped to an F-16. High on amphetamine, with Trump in between. Put on a light coat of baby oil and saluted the troops. He tapped me on the shoulder and said, This is gonna be it. Whoa, 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 wait, wait, wait. Stop, 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 stop. What, what, what? What? I'll get my files. Have a good one, guys. We'll see you on the next one. Fucking stop. Dude, come on. Seriously. This is my mom's an alcoholic.